Okay, it seems that I could be live. <laughs> and you were live, like a rabbit in the headlights live. Quite incredible. That was three years ago, but this is now. I'll see you in a wee minute. Hello, whiskey folk. Hello, everyone. Welcome, welcome to the VPub. Welcome to another Thursday night. Of course, it's a wee bit different tonight, a wee bit self-indulgent, and I hope you'll forgive that. The channel doesn't really do a lot of kind of anniversaries. It doesn't do a lot of kind of milestones, celebrations or that kind of thing, but it's whiskey themed. So three years is a big deal, certainly in Scotch whiskey and for many whiskies around the world, three years is a big deal. It's at that point of kind of maturation, isn't it, that it's legally whiskey. So it's nice to mark three years of the VPUB. It's not three years of the channel, it's three years of this VPUB live streaming environment. One of the very few regular things that I've ever committed to <laughs> and stuck to in my wee life. Um, fantastic to have so many of you want to hang out with me for such a self-indulgent thing, but I hope that you can get some fun out of it as well. That wee intro that you saw at the start there was me, my first ever live, when really, um, I really didn't know what I was doing. Um, I'd just released a video that day and I was sitting there and I'd, I'd been toying with the idea for a long time. So I took a nice drama whiskey and I just hit the go live button and I said, let's go. What's the worst that can happen? And Unannounced, completely unannounced, 39 of you, thank you so much, 39 of you that evening dropped in and hung out with me for an hour or so to kick off the first ever live stream. It was three years ago, how time flies. But it seems like I've been doing this for a long time as well at the same time. And it's been really, really terrific fun. And it's come to me, mean so much more to me than just kind of whiskey and doing a YouTube thing. It's come to mean so much about you and hanging out with you and the friendships and the connections. And as we go through tonight, anybody that's joining here for the first time, I hope you're going to work that out. I hope you're going to see, you're going to hear testimonies of that um, and people recalling um, the times that we've met in real life, the connections and the friendships that we've, be, that we've made, even if we haven't had the chance to meet in real life. And it's all down to this platform, this technology, uh, this kind of fantastic concept, and it's of course down at the hands of whiskey. Anyway, I've got a couple of guests to drop in tonight, and the guests have been picked for reasons And as we go through tonight, so we'll have some cameos coming in and hanging out with us a wee bit. I want to make a short announcement, and it's kind of at that point that it's kind of, I can talk about this now, but um, on YouTube, monetization is a thing. So when you watch a YouTube video, unless you've got a premium membership, you sit through ads. That's how YouTube works. And YouTube gives the creators a cut of the revenue that it makes from those ads. So anytime that you watch any of my videos, you might have to sit through an ad. I want to jump in when I'm talking about money here. Uh, I've just had two drams and I don't want to miss these. Um, so two people fought me drams right from the start. Uh, I'm going to come in and hang out with you guys and speak to you very, very shortly. Is that Hoyt that's bought me a dram? It looks like Hoyt. Have I missed it already? It, it is Hoyt, a dram to cel celebrate three years of the VPUB. Thank you so much, Hoyt. And um, also one from my friend Anthony Dunn saying, Hi, Roy, happy three years and health for many more. You can be an official whiskey reviewer. <laughs> Now, thanks again for a lovely gift this week. Anthony, you're very, very welcome to it. And Hoyt, uh, we were just chatting offline a wee bit beforehand. He was getting ready, sitting in a comfortable spot. Thank you very much for your drams. Cheers, guys. Cheers. I was at a Kuboken tasting tonight. So I tipped what was left out of the, the glasses to make a week. It's still a single malt. But I tipped what was left in a single glass. Jimmy Legs bought me a dram as well, saying Long Row Red Pinot Noir, 11 year old at 53.1%. Magical. He made it through customs in the glass. Cheers, Roy. Ah, that's from me, Jimmy. I'm very, very glad that you're enjoying it. Um, I wrapped it carefully and I sent it across to a wee gift. If it, if it wasn't going to make it to you, it wasn't going to make it. I'm very glad it's in your hands, my friend. And I'm glad that you're enjoying it tonight. Cheers, Jimmy Legg. Thank you. 
Yes, so YouTube gets revenue. However, some of the keener eyed amongst you might no notice that from about springtime, early this year, February time, I stopped monetizing the live streams. And I did that for, a, for two reasons. And I want to share it with you quickly now. Um, the first thing is, is that lots of people are picking this up on the replay. And thank you very, very much if you are watching this on the replay. It means that you're picking it up podcast style and you're listening to it in chunks perhaps on the go and you don't want to be sitting through an ad every time you pause, restart or come back into the video again. I was very mindful of that. So I wanted to ditch ads on the live streams because they're two, two and a half hour streams. And that's very much my fault. It's what, what the VPUB is, is what I do. So I wanted to get rid of that. But the other thing is, is that we started to the, the YouTube membership thing. You could join the channel. You could pay $1.99 a month for your emojis and things that you can use, your custom Glen Cairn emojis, your custom Barfly emojis, and all the other things that's very specifically around the channel and the culture of the channel. And that gave me the support. That gave me the financial support that I didn't need it from the ad revenue. So from here on forth, it's been a very successful experiment. Thank you to all the barflies that joined uh, by clicking that join button underneath. Thank you for your support. There's over a hundred of you. And it means that I never need to ask YouTube for a cut of their advertising revenue. And you don't need to sit through ads if you're watching this on the replay or indeed live. So um, let's see how that goes going forward. I've had more virtual drafts coming in. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Um, coming in from uh, Graham Horner at Whiskey Works. You've changed your name a wee bit there, calling yourself Graham Horner. Whiskey Works now, fantastic. Graham, he said, caught the last few VPUBs on re replay. Uh, wasn't missing tonight, even if I have an early start tomorrow. Wow, happy three years, Roy Slancha. Thank you so much, Graham, you star. Nice to have you in. And Lee Hosey uh, over in the east coast of Scotland at Haddington Whiskey saying happy anniversary, Roy. Cheers, Lee. I should be jumping in to welcome the dedicated barflies and beautiful whiskey folk. Um, I'll do that very, very quickly. Uh, somebody else has just joined the Barflies, Shayla um, Whiskey Central. Thank you so much and welcome to the Barflies. You can now use custom emojis, not just in the live chat here, but if you're watching on the replay and you are a member of the Barflies, you can use all the cool emojis as you comment on the video underneath. I am making a huge effort to make sure I reply to all the VPUB um, uh, comments that are, that are left. If you're watching this on the replay, I'm making a huge effort to do that. Uh, who else is, do we have in tonight? Glenn Danson Minji is in. Good evening, Roy, and congratulations on three years. Thank you, Glenn. Good to have you. Chuck Malt Minion is in as well. Brian Kilco over there. Are you where are you? Northeast Rhode Island or something, Brian? I think. Uh, Mark Goins uh, is, is, is in as well. Mark is new star. This is Mark's work here. This fantastic big VPUB compass. This compass, the idea of it being a compass is that it's just kind of signifies that it, it stands for the fact that so many of you are far flung and all over the globe. That's why it's a compass. And that was sent to me as a gift from the star that is Mark Goins. Welcome in, Mark. Good to see you. Lassie Hort Oatsman has joined the Barflies. Welcome. And also um, somebody else just joined in. Uh, Sheila, I, I did mention it. Thank you. Peter Wilcox is here. Neil Laverty, Luna Aaron, uh, Helen, Helen and Andy. That's Hell's Wed down south. Richard Hall down in Nottingham. Uh, Robert Fredrickson, you star Robert, good to see you. And Greg's Whiskey Guide in France, always a pleasure, Greg. Falsgraf is here. Aquavita is a non-member, a non-patron. I am absolutely okay sitting through a few ads and even sit through them without skipping since I know this gets you more money. Listen, Falsgraf, you never need to worry. It's never a condition of watching the channel. It's all fully optional. The easier I can make it for people to watch and enjoy the content, that's the focus. Um, so... When it comes to the pre-recorded content, you know, like the, the re recycled reviews and uh, on the road movies and things like that, the edited stuff, that's going to be monetized. That will still have ads. But these long play things where people cut it up and have to watch multiple ads as they cut it into chunks, that's what wasn't sitting well with me. So that's what I've changed. Zelenair has joined the Barflies as well. He's And uh, I'd like to uh, welcome you in as well, my friend. I'm not very sure where you are, but it's an absolute pleasure to have you in. Jimmy Jazz is here. Shane Lay, Jenny, Jerry Miller. Uh, bloody hell, so many people. Ratings are good today. 258 of you in. Fantastic to have your support. And it's good to welcome you and Jerry. I, Laddie, my friend over in the Netherlands. Good to have you on about. Uh, Matthias Mulder is here. Congrats. Thank you, Matthias. Gary Carew is here. Service Alafis, Andreas in Norway. Marcus Kreitner, Ebhead Rolf, Everwind. Uh, Rob Halford, good to, good to have you, Rob. So, so many of you, and I know I'm going to miss lots and lots of you tonight again. But it's a pleasure. 
to hang out with you. It's always a pleasure. We do get to talk about whiskey from time to time, don't we? Um, tonight, talking about whiskey, I want to just point out a gift that was sent to me very, very recently from my friend. I was looking to see if he was in tonight, but he might pop in a wee bit later. He's working during the V-pubs. Most of the time he does uh, uh, attend occasionally. But look at this cool thing. Uh, we can buy this in the UK and Europe now. Um, I've noticed that appearing recently, but this is from Bud Jenkins. Bud in the States, this is Westward. I'll try and get the camera to focus on that. This is Westward whiskey. Uh, uh, American single malt at 45%, unchill filtered, no age statement, but quite a fantastic color. Look at that. Um, uh, this is from the Northeast of the, uh, of the US. Um, I have never tried it before. I've never engaged with this whiskey. I was intrigued, I was curious, and this appeared, this just arrived from Bud Jenkins. Yet another example is so many of these gift whiskies that sit over my shoulder here. I do open them from time to time. Just another example of how generous the community is. And it means that I never ever um, go in cap in hand to any producers or bottlers or retailers or whatever it may be. There's more whiskey than I can handle, and it's all from you guys. It's fantastic. Tom Bueller Bell's the same. Congrats, Roy. And Rob Halford also saying, can't taste anything with COVID. Oh, dear. I know somebody else that's suffering from the same thing, but still wouldn't miss this one. I just want to catch these before I jump through to my first cameo guest tonight. Peter Wilcox is saying, Glen Goyne Legacy, Chapter 1 in the Glass. Peachy, excellent, Peter. Uh, and risen to yourself, my friend. Cheers. Right back at you, Peter. Thank you so much. Uh, who have I missed? <laughs> Philip Stories here, three years deserves a dram after lockdown. That is, thank you, Philip. Thank you so much. And Antonio C, happy third Aquavite, happy for you. And Antonio, thank you so much, my friend. And Whiskey Novice Jim over in Northern Iron. <laughs> Saying congrats, Roy. Here's to many more years to come. Jim, it's a pleasure to know you and have you hanging out with us, my friend. So more coming in. This is going to be difficult to keep up with tonight. Uh, David Evans is saying three years amazing. Always look forward to it. Thank you so much, David. And Per Christensen as well. And Denmark saying congrats with the three years. Looking forward to many more. Cheers, guys. Cheers to every one of you. I'll finish my kuboke and my throat could do with a wee sip. Cool little tumbler here as well. Cool little rocks glass with the uh, Kuboken branding. It came with the tasting set I was working through tonight. Um, so I kind of want to go back. If you imagine that little clip that I opened with tonight, that was me. That was the first ever stream. And the kind of motivation behind the stream. I was loving the content. I was loving the live streams that were coming out of the States, the guys in the States specifically Scott and Bart, the Scotch Test Dummies, and the guys in Canada and things. But they were on at a time that it meant that I was, it was very, very late. I was often with headphones in the middle of the night tuning into these streams, but it was worth it. The sense of community, um, the interaction that the YouTube live stream brought us, the ability to ask questions live and interact with the creators, the presenters themselves, but also any kind of interesting guests or whatever they had on. And I thought, wouldn't it be amazing if we had one on a European time stream or time zone? And in time, it took me some amount of months. It was about the January, February time the channel started. But later in that year, 2017, 23rd of November to be precise, I went live and, and started this thing. Um, I was nervous as hell. I thought that originally I could start it and I could share it with other people and kind of pass the baton round or whatever. But it became clear that what I wanted to do was kind of my own thing. Um, and it became clear that I was just going to have to pony up and do it myself. And I'm very, very glad that I did. This has been fantastic for my mental health. It's been fantastic for connectedness, for friendships, a different way to explore and enjoy whiskey. And it's really been something that's come to mean so much more than just technology. Um, it's, it's an organic, real thing with its own kind of humor and culture and friendliness and inclusivity and shared knowledge. I want to keep this going. If, so if the question is about if we're going to stretch that metaphor as long as we can, do we bottle it at three years old or do we keep it maturing, right? My idea is fully to keep this going as long as it's doing well inside its cask, as long as this exists, this vessel. I want to keep it going with your help and support. 
I'm going to give credit now to, I've already mentioned them, Scott and Bart, I often do. The reason that I'm here on YouTube is very much to do with them and the fun I was having supporting them and being part of their community, honestly. Um, so when I started the channel, they were very supportive of me. When I started the live streams, they were supportive as well. And I reached out to Scott very early on. It would only been about three or four streams in. Scott, I know it's a big risk for you, buddy, but is there any chance you could come on and guest? And he goes, yeah, sure, no problem. About the time that I asked him to come on, he had just released a parody video of the Recycled Reviews. So if you've never seen this parody video, I guarantee you're going to have a laugh watching it. It's a recycled review with Scott and Bart's take on it, specifically Scott's take on it. And he's hamming it up big style. It's just a great, fun video. I've recommended it to people regularly. Just go and search Aquavite recycled reviews on Scott and Bart's channel and you'll find that it's great, great fun. When I invited him onto the live stream, not only did he come on as a guest, as graciously as he did, but he also appeared on set and in character. Have a wee look at this. Hey, are you there? Uh, yes, I'm here. Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> First of all, how are you? <laughs> I'm doing. I'm doing another one of these recycled reviews, and I'm not. I'm not quite sure how you get by with these. <laughs> Is that you get through another bottle of Lagavulin already? <laughs> yeah, it's not. It's not good. <laughs> Just, uh, uh, you did fifteen of these, and you saw my review the other day. And I think I got to eight, and I was out. <laughs> I have. I have to say, listen. I, I didn't want to tell you this because I was loving the video so much, but the empty bottles. I don't finish them there and then they've been finished well in advance i think maybe that's what you're doing wrong i don't know i mean you know it seemed like a good idea at the time <laughs> and then it sure it wasn't it was not a good idea at all <laughs> well it was a fantastic idea so when my neighbors just pulled up in his new tray hey, jim jim how you doing <laughs> yeah, all right yeah hey sally <laughs> yeah, <I'm> yours too. <laughs> <laughs> Buddy, that was just so so cool. Oh. Just, when I was kind of thinking about what what kind of little <laughs> bloopers and highlights can I dig out to share with everybody, people that perhaps weren't watching back in the, the early early days, but you probably remember doing that. I just couldn't believe that you would step outside, step into character, dress up and deliver something like that, and you stayed in character. I don't know what you mean, year. character. I, was, I mean, that's real life right there. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Listen, can I get the ugly stuff out of the way? You've been a bit poorly recently. You've been suffering from, dare we say it, the C word. How's that's your right. health? Yep, that's right. I uh, come in. Actually, it's coming up on four weeks now, and um, I'm, I, I feel lucky I only had the symptoms that I had. Um, it, it, it was just a bad head cold that I had that was hanging in there for three or four days. And um, usually Alka-Seltzer will take care of it for me. I love Alka-Seltzer. And uh, man, it wasn't touching it. And so after the third day and my head was still just pretty plugged up and, and throbbing, I called and got an appointment, got tested. Uh, it came back. It was positive. So I had a little bit of a cough. It's still kind of lingering. I lost my uh, taste and smell, which is the worst part. And uh, that's coming up. Saturday will be four weeks now that I've that I've lost it. So that's the hardest. Any sign thing. of anything coming back at all? I, I'm I'm starting to get some hints. I had some mustard uh, yesterday, and I was able to on a sandwich, and I was able a couple of times it came through. Um, but you know, I've been testing it. The the first one, okay. So four Saturdays ago, completely out. It, it's really odd. It's really weird. You can't smell. You can't taste. I think it's three nights later, I finally, I pour a whiskey and I pour uh, the new Lafroy Karchus because I'm thinking I'm going to hit this, you know, something really peaty, something strong ABV. And for sure, this has got to come through. And it didn't. I couldn't taste a thing. I couldn't have told you if I was drinking, you know, a bourbon or a sherried scotch or, or what. And that was so weird. 
But um, even last night, and I'm still kind of checking, but last night I started with, I had a rye whiskey and yeah. I can tell it's whiskey that's on the palate, but I, I mean, there's no discernible notes to it. After the rye whiskey, I went to a single malt scotch. And I mean, I can't tell a difference. I mean, they, they wow. I mean, they, they just, they hit the palate the same. You can tell it's alcohol. So, so you're, get, you're getting the kind of the, 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 the alcohol prickle and things, right? Yeah. Yep. But there's no flavor. Yep. Right. Yeah, it's, I'll, keep, I'll, I'll keep my fingers crossed. The people <laughs> that I've been in touch with, they've been without their smell and taste from anything from just a few days to a number of weeks. So fingers crossed that you're almost at the other end of it. Yeah, I know. And I was telling Bart, I was like, man, I hope there's nothing permanent there. Where I mean, because I'd hate to lose that, that those subtleties that you get and you love with whiskey. So, and speaking of Bart, he uh, his kids brought it home from school. Um, his youngest did and gave it to the whole family. So he's down now uh, with it, uh, but the same kind of head cold symptoms. Uh, he had a lot of fatigue and uh, he's pretty much bounced back already though and is uh, ready to get back at it. So good, good. And he so did lose, I think he just said there was one or two days where he lost most of his taste and smell, but it came back pretty quick for him. It's kind of bizarre how it's affecting people differently, and it's yeah. I, I don't we don't know if it's down to the, our own physiology or the dose that we we pick up or whatever, um, and it just goes to show that it can just come out of nowhere. Unfortunately, you're frontline, buddy. You're a part of the emergency services. You're out there, um, you know, best will in the world. You, it's going to be tough for you, I know. As um, well, listen, I'm glad to see you looking so well. Thank you. Looking strong and powerful, <laughs> and I hope that soon you'll be back with your face. And uh, there was a there was a whiskey I had tonight. Uh, this is Tomatin. Uh, sorry, this is not Tomatin. This is Kubokin uh, from a, an Oloroso sherry cask at Cast mm. Strength mm. PT. Nice. A beautiful cask, and it was you that was in my mind. I remember your reaction to the mm. Buena Moño Oloroso, and I thought, I bet you Scott would love this. Mm. So fingers That'd be crossed. Good to try. Now um, I have to uh, just just sorry, go ahead. ahead. Just a couple of questions that I saw and even what you mentioned that did we had an outbreak at work um, here and we had a lot of people just swept through pretty quick within the last month, month and a half. We really only had one or two people up until that time that had that had gotten it. But then about a month ago, it just swept through and took a lot of people down with it. But um, I, I'm the only one here, my wife and I've got one son that's still living here. He's a senior in high school. They haven't gotten it. They haven't had any symptoms. Um, and uh, the other option, if I didn't get it work, I think uh, my 18 year old, my senior may have brought it home from school and he's just asymptomatic and gave it to me. So, but my wife got a test done. She was negative. Bart's whole family, his wife and both sons, they all tested positive. They all got it. Um, but his, his uh, youngest with, with down syndrome actually brought it home from school. They sent him home with a fever and um, he come home and he said he spent the weekend coughing all, all over everybody in the house. So what can you do? It, yeah. It's so tough, isn't it? You can't, you have to still look after the family, but yeah. you're, you're, you're kind of forced to face it. Hey, Vicky Thompson's bought me a dram saying happy birthday V pub from Grant and Vicky. Vicky, thank you so much. And thanks to Grant as well. Uh, wonderful to to see you and and Anthony Dunn is saying, oh my God, I've never. He's talking about the video, obviously. Oh my God, I've never seen this, and I watch both your channels. Fantastic, uh, Jim <laughs> and Sally ain't impressed. <laughs> Do you have neighbors called Jim and Sally? No, uh, no, I just made that up. <laughs> I'm kind of, I'm super relieved about that. <laughs> but it's just the acting. The acting is first class. But let, let me talk about the live stream thing. Let me talk about the uh -huh. fact that the V Pub exists and everything. We were tuning in to you guys. Uh, and I appreciate it's difficult for you. You're both on shifts. Patterns are changing. And it's I think it's hard for you guys to get together to do your pre-recorded stuff, yeah. let alone your live streams. But we do miss the Scotch Test Dummies Sunday night fixture. Is there a view to that ever returning, do you think? Um, possibly in the future. And, you know, that was it. We both have full-time jobs. Um, and it just we were we got too busy because we're doing two shows a week. Um, you know, we were getting yeah. together, pre-recording those. And we were also get we were we were doing lives every Sunday, and it just it finally started to weigh on us, and uh, we just decided that the live streams was the best thing to give up and continue with the two two reviews, two pre-recorded shows a week. Um, you know, right now with our shifts and our schedules, right now it's still pretty hard getting together for those. Now we haven't. We've uh, I think we've actually gone two weeks now without a show. But that's because of. COVID and the loss yep. of all the, the, the taste and the smell. 
and I don't know how long it's going to be. Hopefully it comes back soon. I didn't think it would last four weeks for right. me. So right. hopefully we can get back to even just doing some pre-recorded shows here soon. Well, we caught the video of Bart. Um, he did a solo thing uh, mm -hmm. and he went out live and he was kind of just breaking the news to everybody that, that unfortunately, you know, that you were a man down and it was so everybody knew to kind of not expect too much in terms of output or content. If you can't taste and you can't smell, right? <laughs> where's the fun? What, what can you do? Um, so we, we knew, but we've all just kind of been wait, waiting and watching to see how you're recovering. Like I say, it's good to see you strong and healthy, mm -hmm. but we, we need that palate to come back, Scott, because we we yeah. can't just rely on Bart. You know, <laughs> you're the yin to the yang. And the <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. We're good yeah. together. So, um, yeah, hopefully it comes back soon. I did look online. I mean, the average is eight days, they say, for the loss of the tape. Right. Well, I'm coming up on four weeks, so hopefully soon it comes back. Yeah, yeah. That sensitive palate of yours just maybe maybe needs a wee bit more time. Uh, TLC Watchman Triple Nine is saying congrats from Canada, Aquavite. Here's to at least three more years. I'll drink to that. Slant your cheers. So obviously, Scott, it means that you don't have a dram in hand. That's right. That's right. And you've got some other guests coming up. So um, I'll bid you farewell. You're on the clock as well for work. Yes. Listen, I'm going to I'm going to show you one more thing. Okay. Um. I was, uh, before Aquavite was a thing, or let's say it was a thing, but it was in social media. It was a website. It wasn't a YouTube channel. But only by a few days, I tuned in to um, a stream that you and Bart had, and it was the first time my name was ever mentioned. This is a nothing clip. There's nothing funny. Mm. That, just for posterity's sake, I want to pop this in here so you can hear this moment. You see it, what it actually looks like. <laughs> Definitely. Now, Arrow Y08 asked us to ask you, can you ask what percentage of the production that you guys do is for single malts? It's it's a funny one because we're producing around about 2 million liters of uh, pure alcohol. So there you have it. That second that you or Bart said, Arrow Y08, Arrow Y08 is who Aquavite used to be before he was Aquavite. That was me tuning in late. And the jolt of inclusion and excitement and fun I had that I could connect with you. Um, I'd been in your community for a long, long time, but the live streams brought that level of, of connectedness and access to be able to ask a question of the two Scots at Tomatin there. Mm -hmm. So for that and that reason alone, who would have known that's the, the start of a of a long friendship now, I'm, I'm very glad to say. <laughs> For that alone, I want to say to you and your sidekick, your buddy Bart, thank you. I owe you a lot. I owe you, I was already in love with whiskey. You inspired me and showed me how to be in love with YouTube, both of you did. And I'll thank you and I'll be ever in your debt for that very thing. Scott. Well, thank, yeah. thank you and uh, congratulations to you and uh, job well done. I mean, people tune in left and right for you here. They love to hear the wisdom of Roy. And <laughs> I can remember the first, um, the first live stream when we had you on, and I think it was the 12 hours of boom and we were doing 45 minute segments. And I said, Hey Roy, I said, well, do you want to come on? Let's come on and talk whiskey and you can maybe do some, some whiskey pronunciations, some distillery pronunciations for us. Cause you'd had a video or two out on your channel. Not, not too much else at that time. Yeah, and you and you were really kind of you were put aback. You were like, "Well, I don't know what I, what I would have to talk about for forty five minutes." <laughs> <laughs> we said, "You'll do fine. You'll be fine." <laughs> I know, I know. It's incredible to think, right? I can't even squeeze it into two hours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that clip also when we had Scott and Scott on, we were afraid we got them both fired after that live stream. So. Nope, they're both still there. I enjoyed a tasting with both of them earlier this evening, so they're both very much firmly in place. In fact, we might see one of those Scots appearing a wee bit later in the stream tonight to thank him for a completely different reason. I'm going to raise this glass to you, my friend, and I'm going to say thank you so much uh, for everything that you've done over the last, what is it, seven years now? Um, yeah, a little over seven years now. And uh, health notwithstanding, I look forward to more of Scott and Bart at Scottish Test Dummies. It's a pleasure to know you. It's a pleasure to be a friend. And uh, all my best to your buddy as well. And Thank you, Roy. Cheers, Scott. Thanks so much. Cheers. Cheers. 
fantastic guy. Anybody that hasn't seen that recycled review, please go back and watch it on their video. It's the only recycled review that Scott's ever done. I think it's about time for him to uh, bring that character back again. Mitch76 has said, Slancho Vac, congrats on three years. Thank you very much, Mitch. That looks like a new name, um, and it's nice to welcome you here. My friend in Canada, Daniel, over there in, uh, where are you? Edmonton, Daniel, aren't you? Congrats, Aquavide. Have a dram with your handsome friend. Thank you very much, uh, Daniel. Yeah, you're not so bad looking yourself. Cheers, buddy. It was nice to welcome you in Scotland recently as well. Cheers. Wow, I'm looking for those days to return, those days that we can get back together in real space together. McAllen Fine and Rare is in tonight as well. Good to have you, Doc. Good to see you. See what the chat is saying. Um, my moderators have been amazing over the years as well. It's never been a formal thing. I've just kind of, in a panic, clicked on a friendly face in the chat and asked if they would moderate and they've stuck with it. Um, originally, it would have been Jason uh, Whiskey Wise, then it was Whiskey Jason over in Germany, and my friend Vin, the Whiskey Rev, of course. And then as time went on, Doc McAllen, Fine and Rare, Alistair Gray, Steve A., um, Gregor McQuee, lots of people just kind of dropping in and being able to support uh, and uh, try and manage the chat and the lovely, welcoming gentlemen they are as well. Tony Nelson is here. The first mention of my name on a whiskey YouTube channel was on a Scott and Bart live stream. Tony, I have to say, and I've mentioned it before, but you're one of the original names from that original 39 three years ago, alongside Reb Mordecai, who was in earlier tonight. He might still be here. Kilted Moose, Scott Monroe. Uh, Whiskey Jason in Germany, as I've mentioned, Andy Walker, Toon Van Roy, Mikey Hay, and Tony Nelson. You were, that's so, so, so reassuring for anybody that does anything like this to have people that are still hanging around after that time. I thank you for your support and I thank you for your patience and perhaps endurance for being able to listen to uh, everything I've had to say. Thomas Elmer is in saying, good luck for the future, Roy. Thomas, pleasure to meet you as well. Uh, Thomas is either Thomas Elmer, as he's in tonight, or sometimes he's Ross Fudd. It's nice when we have uh, uh, pseudonyms that we can uh, work under, isn't it, Thomas? Good to have you in. Stevie is here. I recall a panicked day that pulled me in, lol, and you've stayed with it, Steve. Thank you so much. Menno, my friend in Belgium, saying, even if you'd watch the replay on double speed, 45 minutes wouldn't cut it. <laughs> you're right, Menno, you're right. Joe Prestera is saying, already three years, here's to many more. Joe, thank you very much. Nice to have you in again, my friend. Hey, Whiskey Central, Sheila has bought me... Um, in Mexican dollars, that looks like. She's in Mexico right now saying, congratulations to three years, Roy. You're an absolute gem. I think we're all very thankful you decided to start live streaming. Uh, here's to many more years in the cast. Slancha Vah, Shyla. Thank you so much, Shyla and Jimmy Leg. I'll still be here when it's just you and me, Roy. That's like a warm, cuddly blanket, Jimmy. That's very, very nice of you. Cheers to Shayla. Cheers to, cheers to Jimmy as well. Thank you. There has been kind of crazy things that's happened over the years. And I was kind of thinking about uh, going into the past and p picking out wee bloopers and silly things I've said and done and mistakes. But it's kind of tough to do that because the first thing you have to do is remember it and then scrub through like a two, two and a half hour long, maybe longer video um, in order to kind of find those, those bloopers. So I was just really reaching for the really standout moments. Um, uh, Scotch test dummies, but Scotch just bought me a dram saying cheers, Roy, and all the barflies. Cheers, Scotties. Thank you so much, my friend. Cheers. And Whiskey Mystery Phil is in. Uh, it's Phil and Deepa over in California as well. Congrats. We are an anniversary as it was two years since our first whiskey video, but yours are more educational. I saw the comment on the, the YouTube feed. It came through. I couldn't believe that that's two years since that fantastic first video that you guys did. Who'd have thought that you'd be very much one of the cogs in the big machine that is this amazing community, Phil and Deepa. Another great channel and another great video. Sakin is here. Sakin, I've got your gift bottle over my shoulder, my friend. He's saying, I know what you mean about the sense of community in the whiskey world. I love it too. It's really what brings it. So it's that kind of thing that brings us back. You'd think it'd be all these wonderful whiskeys. They are amazing and really enjoyable, but that sense of being part of a friendly community of people is really amazing. I spoke to Ralphie and uh, a first broached the idea of him coming on and maybe appearing on a live stream. He said, oh, no, Roy, I don't, I don't really think that's for me. I, I know what I'm like. I get carried away. And, and this was at a tasting that he'd hosted. Excellent 
wonderfully fully uh, engaged tasting uh, in Glasgow at the Good Spirits Company. And uh, yeah, he was just riffing. He was just going off and being Ralphie. It was wonderful. And I could see that he would maybe have to kind of reset his mind a wee bit to be live. And I, I didn't push it. And anything would always be on Ralphie's terms anyway. But then as he approached his 10 years, we started to talk about maybe he could, we could do an interview together or something like that. And that seemed good. As time passed, as time moved on, Ralphie was down with the idea of doing a live stream. So it was just a question of where do we do it and when? And eventually we agreed that he would step behind the bar at the VPUB and he would appear live. And that, that was amazing because Ralphie said, 90 minutes, Roy, 90 minutes will do it. And I said, absolutely on your terms, my friend, you're here uh, to be my guest. 90 minutes suits you. That's how much it's, it's how long it's going to be. Eventually we killed that stream at three hours and it flew past. And the amount of views that's still on that stream to this day to celebrate Ralphie's 10 years, the amount of engagement that it has, the amount of feedback that it has, is still amazing. I get messages weekly about that stream. I would love to do it again, but as I say, this is all at Ralphie's um, behest. It's, it's on his terms. But I'm going to share something with you now that happened when Ralphie was live with me. And I'd always had an inkling that the reason that Ralphie started his channel because his brother Clive had put a camera in his hand and encouraged him to do it while he was home injured. He was an undertaker with an injured shoulder. He couldn't work and he was climbing the walls. And his brother Clive, who's got his own YouTube channel, a massive YouTube channel, Clive.com, um, gave him a camera and said, do a whiskey thing, do a whiskey thing. And that's what started the Ralphie channel. But the injury was because he had tripped over a scooter. We were live together and I asked him outright what the real reason for the injury was. And I got the scoop of Ralphie's 10 years, I think. Let me share this with you. It's brilliant. Right. It was a little kiddie scooter and my pal's young son wanted me to have a shot. And I misjudged how steep the slope was. <laughs> so I was on the scooter when I tripped over it. So I'm going to come clean in that. You've been set up with that question. <laughs> no. I was trying to keep that under wraps. But no, I had to go tell to you the why. hospital and I was sitting for hours in the outpatient with my <laughs> clavicle dislocated. <laughs> Ralphie, you star. <laughs> you star. So he, he came clean and he said that actually he was riding the kid's scooter when he fell and got that injury. And Ralph, we were so, so grateful that you were stupid enough to ride a kiddie's scooter and end up with an injury that took you in a different uh, path in your life and in your whiskey journey so that you could share it with us. Mm -hmm. Now let's raise a wee glass to Ralphie. Absolutely superb. Cheers. <laughs> Wonderful for him to share and come clean. Now he was suspicious and he asked me, did Clive put you up to that? Did you add? No, there nothing. It was just an inkling that I had. Um, so there you go. Anthony Dunn's bought me another wee dram and said, Roy, is there any whiskey you've had early on your journey that you wish you could taste again now with all the additional experience to appreciate? Do you know the funny thing is, Anthony, that if I went back with the palate that I have now to those original epiphany moments, it might not have the same thing. So much of it is about the moment, eh, the moment in time, who you're with, the environment you're in, where you are on your journey. All of these things come together to give you that flash of an epiphany. Um, but there's so many of them over the years, the Glen Goines that I've had, um, the first time I had that Lagavulin uh, 16 when I was out fishing with my brother, the first ever Glen Farkless 10, the first ever time I had a really lovely, creamy, ex-bourbon type, more kind of lead uh, experience rather than kind of sherry, sherry, sherry that I was enjoying back then when I was looking for the hooks and whiskey, the peaty uh, whiskeys, the sherry bombs, things like that. When uh, Glen Farkless 10 was one of the whiskies that brought me back into a much more gentler side of whiskey. Um, so many epiphanies over the years, Anthony, and every one of those is going to be unique to me potentially. Um, and yours will be hopefully very, very different, but just as profound. Um, and I wish you the best going forward with it as well. It's it's an amazing thing. I'm often a wee bit jealous of people that are earlier on in their journey than I am to have all those experiences over again, because that's all we're doing is just chasing that next amazing experience. Jamie Brown is saying, thank you for three years, just became a patron. All your videos are amazing. Jamie, thank you so much. I've never asked for a patron. I have never asked for a patron. You'll never hear me asking for patrons. It doesn't mean that I'm not super, super grateful for it. The reason that this can exist is an independent thing. 
is because of that support. I, know, I, I can buy the whiskey that I want to buy to review, to share with you based on how you support me. It's an amazing thing. It's like that perfect storm of just everything coming together at the same time in order for me to do this on my terms. It's really redefined content and sharing content. Rob Whiskey in the Six, one of my original first ever guests as well, saying congratulations on three years, brother. Rob, you classy star of a friend. Thank you to you. Um, I'm looking forward to the day that you and I can actually be in the same room together. Fantastic, Rob. Cheers. Rob at Whiskey in the Six in Toronto. Uh, been doing a great channel, still putting out great content. Again, after maybe six years, seven years, I don't know, quite a long time. Rob's been putting out content as well. And Danny is saying now he races motorcycles. Yeah, Ralphie's into fitness and motorbikes and um, he's a fascinating guy, fascinating guy. Neil Laverty saying, I opened the Glen Scotia Cast Strength on your recommendation tonight. Love it. VPUB recommendations are always great. The thing is, this is the amazing thing, Neil, is that I re recommend the whiskey to you. And because the people are in here live, you get a sense from them. It's like a crowdsourced opinion that you're getting at the same time because of the live chat. Even if you're watching this on the replay, you can click on that live chat button and see what the folks are saying live as I'm kind of recommending or talk, enthusing about uh, whiskies generally too. Um, I an absolute pleasure for me to have been able to kind of um, take that community-based thing that's funded by you and then just decide what guests to have on. The guests are here at my invitation, with the exception of Ralphie, honestly. Um, but even then, it was at my invitation originally, um, and it just kind of naturally came around through Ralphie's um, agreeing to come on. But all of the guests that appear on the show is fully at my invitation because I see a value in them appearing more than just product placement or exposure for a product or a range of products. I see a value in their insight, whether it's a human side, whether it's whiskey experience, um, something, an angle, an ed education angle on a topic, something that they can bring. That's always what the content is going to be about. Um, Lee J. Brown is saying, congratulations, Roy, on your three years and introducing me to this fantastic community. Lee J., again, it's just a pleasure to have people like you here. You're wonderfully inclusive, warm, friendly. Listen, if you're watching and you're happy to just sit back like a a wall fly bar fly, as somebody said recently, that's great. It's no problem at all. But like so many people, they maybe can't keep up, keep up with the chat that it's moving really quickly, but you don't need to keep up with all the chat. You eventually tune in on specific conversations that you're having with individuals. Just say hello. Maybe it's tonight's your first night. Say hello. Tell people where you're tuning in from. And if you're dramming, if you have something in the glass, tell us what it is that you have. You might be surprised just how uh, welcoming uh, a lounge we have here at the VPUB. It's wonderfully inclusive and great fun to be a part of. Hope you really enjoy That's That's kind of, that's the best stuff that I've shared with you. That Scott clip, wonderful, and the Ralphie clip. That's up there. Um, Scott the Recycled Bin and Ralphie uh, when he was on the VPUB just a year and a half or so ago. Um, but I want to talk about something a bit more profound, and that is the idea that it's not just YouTube creators getting on the live streams and hanging out with each other as friends. That's wonderful, that collaborative atmosphere. We're all part of that same big community. Then the community coming on as guests, and you get to put uh, faces to names that you've been chatting to for a while. I actively encourage that to happen too. But there's one more step that was a much more prickly thing. Akshay Jaitley has said, what a lovely corner of the internet you've created. All the very best for many more years to come. Akshay, it's wonderful to have you on board as well, my friend. Slanchava, thank you for your dram. Cheers. Akshay is currently over in France. So there was a pricklier thing, a more, much more difficult thing. And it was difficult for me a wee bit too, to work out how to do it. And it was difficult for them. And by them, I'm thinking the industry. Because YouTube was this maverick kind of, enthusiast place of just people making <laughs> whiskey content from their homes, from their spare rooms, from wherever it was. Um, and, you know, it was all independent hobbyists and enthusiasts and impassioned individuals that were doing that or, or teams or groups of folk. 
And I think that must have been difficult for the industry to go, oh, that looks interesting, that's that's exciting, but how do we engage? How do we step in there? Because what you want to be able to do is, is have it so that you can not have things dictated so that you can say what you want to say and ask questions that you want to ask. So inevitably you have to approach and work with producers that are happy to have any question asked of them. They are not phased by anything, even the most crunchy questions. Megan Miller has bought me a drum saying, congrats on three years. We're so grateful for this content and community. Love the VPUBs, recycled reviews and bloopers. Ha <laughs> ha. Thank you so much, Megan. Thank you. I'll share one or two more wee bloopers throughout the night with you. Uh, thank you for your drum, Megan. Megan is also in the US and the States. So at a festival, I had a chat with the brand ambassador that was brave enough to step on the Scotch Test Dummies channel and back in January of 2017 with his sidekick, Scott Fraser. And I'm talking about Scott Adams and the two Scots. And I was chatting to him at the festival and he said, yeah, he'd be up for it. I said, I'd be up for it. We talked about it. I said, listen, is it okay if you talk about anything? Will you take any question? He said, any, I don't care. I don't care what. I said, well, if you're dramming and on a night and you're having something that isn't to Martin, you know, what would you have? And he ringed off some of his favourite whiskies. I said, well, if you join, how about you start, you join us drinking one of those instead of a Tomatin product? He said, yeah, of course, no problem. And it set a precedent. And you'll notice that on the VPUB, that when I ask people what's in the glass, it's very rarely one of their own products. And that brings a wonderful whiff of integrity and it shows that the people that are appearing are impassioned whiskey folk. They're enthusiasts themselves that just so happen to work in the industry. And that guy was Scott Adamson. I'll ask him for a thumbs up to make sure he's okay to come on and talk about that. Scott, thank you so much. Thank you for joining. No problem, sir. How are you? Do you remember that chat that we had at that festival that time? I do remember that. And it was actually, I was listening to when you were talking at the beginning there. And I don't think a lot of people will realise that the conversations you have behind the scenes on maintaining the integrity of what the VPUBs actually are. You know, I, I'm, you, you talked at the beginning about how you actively don't monetize nowadays because it's better for the people that are viewing. And I remember that conversation and thinking, you know, that's absolutely fantastic that you could probably have a brand ambassador on every week and have a hour long advert for whatever distillery, but knowing that that's not what you're, um, audience are looking for you you remain so much more in, so much more integrity and picking out what you want and I think um one thing that really stood out for me was when I broached you about the idea of the virtual whiskey festival and you said I don't want to do that on my channel because it's not the sort of thing that I do and I was like that's incredible um and was so delighted that you came on to ours to do it so um yeah I would yeah. say um I think I feel like I backed a winner a few years ago when I hopped on here Aye. I, and I have to say, I feel the same way about you too, because there's more than you're able to wax lyrical about your products, whether it's Tomatin, Kubokin, whatever it is, and you're able to give wonderful insight and depth um, and, and be really, really quite a, an impressive uh, representative for your organization. I have to say, um, uh, I, I think that anybody that's been in any of your tastings would, would, um, would agree with me on that, Scott. It's a pleasure to have you around. But what came across when I was speaking to you is that you were there was synergy there with my voice and the things I was asking and saying. You were like, aye, that's right. These should be like that, but they exist yeah. like this, and these are the reasons that they exist. And I said, well, will you come on and say these words? Will you say these things? And you're like, yes. Yeah. Will you come on and drink? And you came on, and I remember the dram that you had on my channel, and it wasn't a tomato dram. It was an Aaron Bothy or something, I think. And do you know what? I actually just bottle killed that a couple of weeks ago. And uh, I'm absolutely devastated. It was a batch one of the Bothy. Uh, outrageously good whiskey. Um, so I'm hoping that the good. new stuff is, is up to up to uh, crickets. Yeah, and I have to say, a lot of the product coming out of Tomatin, you know, uh, doesn't doesn't lose any ground up against the, the Aran whiskies. We had the Aran guys on a couple of weeks ago, and it was wonderful. Anybody could look at that and think that that was a two and a half hour presentation of Aaron, a big, huge advertisement, and it is. And I don't yeah. mind. I don't mind admitting that. 
yeah. but it's at my invitation for a reason because I love what they're doing and I want to encourage so many other people to follow in that same furlough. And that's why you came on and you were the first actual brand representative, the first uh, person from the industry that stepped forward into this ma maverick environment that is YouTube and the VPUB. Yeah. Um, I don't think you've got any regrets, right? You're, you're, oh, you're yeah. happy with it. Picking up on the Aaron one there, I think, you know, you, you make the point that it could sound like a two and a half hour Aaron um, promotion, but at the same time, a two and a half hour conversation with Jim, James McTaggart is a two and a half hour conversation with Aaron. You know, it's it's been his life for so long that it's going to be that. And that's what you want to get. So to, to your point, I don't think um, it, when it's the right conversation, it's absolutely right. And I certainly don't regret anything about um coming on at all because the conversation we were having was one that I felt that the industry needed to talk about at the time and whether that was coming from a Tomatin point of view or any brand I feel like it was a good conversation for the industry to have a voice in as well as the community that's right say these words why yep. do we have whiskies at 43 percent why don't you why do we have things that still don't have an age statement why do we have these labels that and you we talked about the legacy of scotch whiskey where it had come from and and why that when we are so heavily invested in all these natural presentations as enthusiasts we need to remember that the vast majority of the market out there don't care and yep. in fact the things that they care about they may be a wee bit misinformed Yep. But it needs a gentle touch and it needs insight and it needs reasons explained to them. And, and if they are willing to engage, they can engage. There's more content out there than there's ever been. Um, and it's it's got more integrity all the time, thanks to people like you stepping up and explaining why these things are what, what they are. But gradually, as time's moving on, Scott, we have never seen a range of naturally presented products available to buy as we do right now today. Right. Correct. Year by year, it's becoming better and better. Yeah. Um, so if we want to engage in a natural presentation, we can buy that from Tomatin. Yeah, the, I, mean, want... I was Go just going to say that it would have been a better time in history to be a whiskey enthusiast. You know, no when you look at the products on the market, I also think from a production point of view that the, the quality of spirit that has been distilled now is better than ever before on a consist consistent level. You know, there's always been peaks and troughs, but right now I think the understanding and speaking to the people that are studying distillation and doing long-term working under incredible master distillers and learning the craft, I think that's the level of spirit being made is only matched by the quality of whiskey on the market. I, I think that's right. I think there are wonderful, amazing whiskies that, that, that's in the past, but that's that's now unfortunately available to so few of us. We can't have a time machine and go back, and we just have to trust these stories that we hear how amazing some whiskies were from the past. But I'm telling you just now, every year, every often, every month, I drink whiskies that have never been sipped before. Brand new things, new takes on things. It's just never, we've never been more spoilt for choice. And while the industry is moving in that direction, because we are becoming more aware and more educated, that's only a good thing. And that's the, that's the products that I want to celebrate. It's the ones that I want to share with the community, talking to the community. Everwind has bought me a dram saying, Roy, I came for the reviews to help in making a purchase and left with a bunch of friends. Wonderful, everyone. Thanks for bringing us together. He's saying slanch. Everyone, thank you so much. Graham Fraser is saying, congrats, Roy. My discovery of the VPUB mirrored the start of the pandemic. It's a regular must-do and fab to make many barfly friends via the stream. Graham, it's wonderful to have you as well. I can't believe you've only been here this year. It feels like you've been around much, much longer. And my buddy and one of the first ever guests that ever appeared on the VPUB has bought me a dram as well. Vin, in all around whiskey, and he's saying happy three years of the VPUB. So, Vin... Uh, Graham uh, and my friend uh, Everwind as well over there in the US. Uh, he works for NASA, Everwind. Cool as. I'll raise a glass and say thank you all. Thank you so much. Aye. Lots of things have been spurred. We're, we're spoiled for choice. Loving the fact that we can get together and have that, especially when the world's as crazy and unhinged as it is right now. Just have that pocket, that ring fence time that we can forget about all that for a wee while. Unless we're talking about Scott losing his 
taste and smell. I'm a wee bit worried about that, but fingers crossed. Yeah. Scott, you're going to stay and hang out, aren't you? Because yeah. let's be honest, you've become a bit of a barfly yourself, right? Uh, yeah, I, I do sit silently. I often don't uh, comment along, and I must admit a lot of it is... Uh, so we work a half day on a Friday. We finish at one o'clock. And so nine times out of ten, what you'll find me doing is... Uh, making my cup of coffee and putting on the VPUB in the background to whatever I'm working on and just listening to it like a podcast, like you mentioned. But I try and uh, pop in live as often as I can. But um, nowadays with a, a little kid running about and virtual tastings all the time, it's it can be tough. But I do always try and catch up at some point. I very much appreciate it because it means that I know that I'm reaching enthusiasts regardless of whether they work, it's their day job or not. Uh, and it's a pleasure to to have had you around all this time. I have to say, congratulations on what you achieved this year. I know it's been surpassed. Everybody's jumped on and done these amazing virtual experiences throughout the year. But Scott, we were first. Yes, we were first. 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 Um, yeah. and, and that and that was a, a very very cool reactive thing to do for you to be able to pull together all of those people who were interested in getting together to do that in a collaborative platform and format we've talked about the reasons it couldn't be on my channel it would have been amazing exposure for me but it would have been uh you know not true to what i do um but i was still very very happy to support and be part of it and um, and i think what's happened since then is something to behold is that everybody has worked out how to bring virtual content and make it valuable and i think what we'll see going forward even when the real life uh, festivals kick back in and the uh, distillery tastings um, events and uh, retailer tastings, everything that's going on, we yeah. can have a hybrid situation where you're still able to, through a virtual format, reach people that don't get to be there in real life because of their remoteness or because of whatever reason. Um, and I think we we really forced that this year back in, was it April that happened, the lockdown festival? I think, uh, you know, maybe even the end of March, but I certainly April, but I um, I think the great thing has been, you know, we put that virtual whiskey festival out there to show that it can be done. I think the great thing has been the people that have come afterwards and be able to do it and tie in product and get samples out to people and things like that. You know, um, this was never a sort of thing of let's do this and let's make it the only virtual whiskey festival or the best one. It was a case of let's do this because people want this conversation right now. And as a whiskey drinker, I'm delighted to be getting samples from various whiskey festivals every week and stuff like that. Now, I live up uh, 30 miles north of Inverness. Going to a whiskey tasting is not easy up here, you know. Right. Uh, right. So uh, this virtual element's fantastic for me. And to your point about um, hybrids, I cannot wait until we get back out on the road. This is the busy time of year for me normally. I'm normally yeah. all around the world. Um, and I cannot wait for that. But I can also not wait for the moment where halfway through a uh, uh, tasting, I'm able to get our master distiller on a video call to talk for 10 minutes about a certain product or something. And I think everyone's going to benefit from that hybrid approach in the future. Fantastic. Absolutely. And I hope, uh, you know, it just we're only limited by imagination there as to what we can be, what can be achieved. Uh, Scott, I'm looking forward to you and I being able to work again in the future and whatever it is that we do. I had great fun doing that this year. And I think it, it's we knew that it was going to start this it wasn't necessarily that festival that started it. It was the nature of the predicament, the pandemic that we were in. Um, yeah. But we knew that we were in the right track, that we were doing it. Um, with a bit more time, we could have tasting packs and all of those amazing things to go with it. But the most important thing was to get content out there. Everybody yeah. was stuck at home. And that idea that, look, the whiskey community, even at the creator level, even at the producer level, get together and collaborate. And it's kind of that lovely family feeling that exists on that level as well. Enjoyed Absolutely. it very much. As a thank you to my friend, Tony Evans. Um, he's in here tonight. I've mentioned him. There are a few people that I could have sent this to, but he's here tonight. He's here. He's, he's been there for three years. I'm going to give Tony something really quite special. You gave this to me, and I've drank half of it. You know what this is, Scott, don't you? I do indeed. Um, that is very I, I drank this on my uh, 50th birthday. <laughs> It is um, amazing. I'm going to have another sip of it before I send it to <laughs> Tony. Uh, Tony's down in the Southern Hemisphere. He's quite far away, so I might need to work out a legal way of getting this to him. But this sells for about £12,000 for a full bottle. Am I right? 
Uh, and that sample that you've got in your hand right now sold last week for about £700 in and of itself. So um, I'm glad you cracked it open. I'm, I'm glad oh, you tried absolutely. it. Absolutely. There's only one thing going to happen. This is 50-year-old tomato. So t Tony, if you'll accept this, I'm going to pour a wee tiny drop of it into a glass um, or into a, a wee sample bottle, and I'll make sure that there's still half of it left in there. It's in a really nicely packed little thing and I'll ship it out to Tony. I've thanked you in the past. I should thank everybody, and I will find a way to thank lots of people just for being there, for supporting me and hanging around, and uh, I'll get that sent out to you. I had a mind to share it with Tony uh, if he appeared tonight, and he did actually appear. So there you go. I'm going to have another sip of it before it goes because it is really quite something special. Yeah. Um, and uh, thank you, Scott. You gave us that, and this is this is just to show you the kind of the thought Scott gave me and Scott and Bart that sample when he heard that we were all turning 50 in the same year. Yeah. Yeah. Quite amazing. And that was before we knew how much this was going to go and uh, fetch uh, and secondary market and things. It was never going to get to the secondary market, of course. Well, I don't but, know. Now uh, that Scott lost his taste and smell, he might have to. <laughs> I I wonder if he's open. I, I'm sure he has opened his. We've, I think we spoke about it last year, right. uh, um, or earlier this year actually, when he turned fifty. I think that's exactly what he did as well. But hey, let's. Um, I'm going to show you a wee clip as to show you how this thing came around. This is is at a space side, um, and this was my friend Roddy was on live, and yeah. this is how this game was born. Hmm. I think it's Scotch whiskey. It's definitely Scotch whiskey. The... <laughs> <coughs> if but... I was to guess, third time tonight, is it Speyside? It's not Speyside, no. 50% of the distillery is immediately <laughs> removed from the equation. Is that, are we playing 20 questions here? Yes, yes. So yeah. you 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 had you guessed about Tilly Barton, so that's one. And it's okay, not okay. You've got 18 questions left. He's a taskmaster. Okay. Um is it Highland? No. 17. So there you go. And that was how that game ended up coming around. And we ended up playing that. We were out in the back in the days where you could do this. In the before times, we were at the pot still. And we would buy blind rounds for each other. Um, and we would play this game. And it, and it morphed into this as a space side. You and I are going to have a wee quick game before I say goodbye to you, my friend. Although I think you might, I might be able to tempt you to stay for the quiz. Uh, in order for anybody in the lounge to play along and win themselves one of these uh, exclusive little uh, glass toppers, uh, uh, sniper coins, um, all you have to do is guess the whiskey. It doesn't matter if you guess it after or before me, but Scott has a bottle on hand, yes? I do, I do. Scotch single malt whiskey core range. Correct. But Why before we get into it, I was, I was watching uh, the other week there when Roddy was on and there is an, a, a legend of Roddy in the chat that is fantastic. And I just wanted to add to that because last Friday I was hosting a tasting for a whiskey club that Roddy's a part of and he joined. And it's a whiskey end, club in Glasgow, right? Yeah. Right, yeah. And towards the end we get a message saying, sorry guys, I'm going to have to go and take the dog for a walk. And so I was like, okay, goodbye Roddy, see you later. And about five minutes later, Roddy pops back up on the screen and we get a guided tour around Motherwell with Roddy just walking his dog. It was absolutely fantastic. <laughs> that is Roddy. That he just is. did not want that chat to end, so it was fantastic. That is Roddy. And I have to say, he's, he's been on the VEP up three times now and everybody's like, you have to get that Roddy guy back. You have to get the Roddy guy back. So I, I made the joke last time he was on, I'm going to have to find a way to uh, share some spoils with him and I'll get a, an appearance fee. I have a feeling with Roddy, it's only way he's going to accept anything is if it's forced on him and perhaps in liquid form. Yeah. Um, and Jimmy Legg is saying that first Roddy V pub is my favourite of all time, surpassed even Ralphie. Oh, um, that'll make Roddy chuffed. And uh, I don't think Ralphie will be that bothered, but uh, Roddy and Ralphie are pals too. Uh, and I know that they both think a lot of each other. Thanks, Jimmy. Thanks so much. Um, wonderful stuff. But we're going to try and play a wee game now, aren't we? We are indeed. Um, it's widely available, right? Yes? Yep. Okay, let's see if we can make this work. Let's get through it as quickly as I can. I'm a handicap now, Scott. I'm on a timer, so I'm going to pull up. Oh, I've just had an image through from Scott. Scottish Test Dummies. Ah, 
he's done the same thing as me. I'll share this image with everyone if I can. Uh, Scott has sent me through his picture. So you, I don't know if you can see the level in that. Half full. A bit, a bit less than half full. He's eking it out as well. Yeah. So, and I know that it that it blew his uh, mind as well. Amazing Thanks. treat of a special whiskey to try. Okay, uh, Scott, uh, <laughs> who's that? Thomas Elmer is guessing that you've got Kuboken <laughs> off to the side. I think that would be a wee bit too predictable, would it not? Let's see. Plenty of Kuboken off to the side, but that's not what we're having tonight. We do or have Kuboken, yes, from earlier. Right, let's um put three minutes. Let's start this timer at three minutes, and I'm going to ask you the inevitable, is it? A space side, Scott. No. Let's get the timer up here. It's not. Okay. Um, is it a Highland? Yes. Ooh. If we take Dulwini as the center point, is it north or south of Dulwini? Sorry. Is it north of Dulwini? Ooh. I honestly do not know. Um, I would hazard a guess and say it's probably to the south, Roy. Okay, that, that helps me quite a lot. That suggests to me, I'm thinking of, I'm immediately started, I'm drawn to the to the Eastern Highlands just by your, um, by your reaction well, there. Let um, me just double check. <laughs> all right, I'll ask you an easy one that you can answer. Is it owned by one of the big four? Four, that is Diageo, Pernod Ricard, Edrington, or Grants? No. Okay, it's not owned by one of those guys. And I can confirm that it is to the south of Dalwini. Okay. See, you're a sneak. I think you would have gone for something quite obscure. Is it a new distillery? No. Okay, that's good. Is it a Glen? No. Oh, wow. Now I'm struggling. Does it have an age statement? Yes. Is it an Eastern Highland, Scott? Yes. It's an Eastern Highland, but it's not a Glen. It has an age statement. Is it owned? Is it Anok? No. Oh, wow. I'm up against the ropes here. I'm absolutely up against the ropes. Is it Fetter Cairn 12? Oh, yeah, beauty. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so obviously owned by White and Mackay. Um, yep. so not a Glen Edge statement, Eastern Highlands. So it's not Glen Glass, it's not Glen Dronick, it's not Glen Geary. Um, fantastic. I, I honestly, I, my mouth went dry there. I thought I'm beat here. <laughs> Let's see, Scott, if you'll accept it. it Sorry, go ahead. It was. So close to being, it's, I had to have a look at the map. It is almost lateral to Dalwini. That was a, that was a question that tripped me up. But I, yeah, it should have helped me. It should have helped me. Yeah, that was a fantastic. I don't know how you pulled that one out of the bag. That was a brilliant <laughs> guess. <laughs> That's where it gets the name Sniper and the Sniper coin, right? But what exactly. I have to do is I have to learn how to snipe at a much earlier. <laughs> not, not when I'm on the ropes and literally the second to last or last questions, right? But listen, if you'll accept that, I'd like to send you a wee sniper coin glass topper just as a wee memento, just to say thanks for everything um, and for stepping up and um, not just tonight, um, but in the past as well when you stepped forward, Scott, and the the, the kind of um, eh, all the interactions that we've had since then has always been a pleasure and it's good to know. Uh, the, the tomato brand is in the capable hands of somebody as um, informed, as impassioned as you, honestly, and and the team around you as well. Is Jennifer still there? She is, yeah. Jennifer is the tomato brand manager. But I think, I mean, as a fan, I would love to thank you for the last three years. I'm sure there's 
some marketing manager out there thinking that they could probably bottle you and sell you for a hundred quid a bottle at the moment as a three-year-old. But uh, no, a massive thank you for everything you do for the community. But also, uh, you gave us a huge amount of help when it came to doing all of our virtual things and the softer side sessions in the festival. So uh, a massive, massive thank you for that. It's been a pleasure working with you on everything. It is, and I hope it continues, buddy. And we need to give Jennifer a shout out as well, because the reason that you appeared on that original Scotch Test Dummies thing back in January of 2017 is because she was a fan of the Dummies previous yeah. to that. So yeah. a glass, I'll raise a glass to the, all the team at Tomatin and Jennifer as well. Scott, stay till the end. I'll bring you back in for the quiz if you're interested, if you want to hang around, buddy. But thank you so much. Pleasure to know you, Scott. Cheers. Cheers, Roy. Have a good one. This is a glass of the Kuboken sherry cask. Unfortunately, they're not bottling this yet. And it is a shame because it's pretty fantastic. Powerful, powerful peated whiskey. Not heavy on the peat, but the sherry cask is amazing. Anthony Dunn is saying that shout, oh my God, right, some shot <laughs> for the Fetter Cairn. I know, I know I got away with it tonight. Unreal save, uh, says Gregor McQueen. Absolutely, I pulled it out of the bag. Do we know who managed to pick Fetter Cairn? from the chat. I don't know who got it. Hopefully one of the moderators will pick that up. I was wanting to congratulate whoever managed to pick Fetter Cairn 12 tonight. Ah, Neil Cochran is saying, yes, I wonder if it was Neil again. He won it, he won it last week, didn't he? <laughs> Alistair Gray is saying, ha ha, jammy bastard. Absolutely. And now we can all use a wee sniper emoji in the live chat. Here we go, colon SNI for sniper. SNIP maybe we need to put in. No, SNI is enough. There you go, we can drop in a wee sniper emoji. I'm feeling pleased about that. I was on the ropes. Um, I thank you so much to Scott. Thank you to everybody that's had the confidence from the industry to step forward into the VPUB environment and feel like they're stepping into an environment that is very much filled with people that genuinely want to hear from them. But we may ask difficult questions from time to time. We may want to know why things are. Um, and in order to step into the VPUB, we need to be people that are happy to say the words, to be honest and explain why things are as they are. Uh, Graham Fraser, it looks like Graham Fraser uh, sniped the Fetter Cairn 12 tonight. Graham, if it was you, fantastic congratulations. Uh, I think I've got your address, Graham, I'm pretty sure. Um, if I've shipped you something before, I have it. If I haven't, send me an email, whiskeyaquavity.com, and I'll get a sniper coin across to you. Fantastic stuff. Um, I'm going to share a wee blooper tonight. Well, there's uh, almost 300 of you in. Um, sometimes when you're going live, crazy things happen. There was a time very early on, maybe the second or third live stream I ever did, and I was live on camera chatting. I'll maybe share this with you later tonight, actually. And my office door opened. I was upstairs at the time. And my six-year-old, he was six at that time, he's nine now. My six-year-old was at the door, covered in sick just covered in it. And he was just standing there trembling and he said, Daddy, I've, I, I've been sick. Um, you can hear this, you maybe hear this faint little voice in the clip that I'll share way, way later. Um, but that happened live and it's just like, oh wow. So it is genuinely me coming live from my house here. But this other thing happened as well and this taught me a lesson. This taught me to not talk about gin, only talk about whiskies in the VPUB. Have a look over my left shoulder at the blue light in the background. But it, they hit the timing right and uh, the, gym, the gin boom was here. And now the botanist has become one of the best known uh, kind of uh, higher end gins that you can buy out there. Jesus. Something has just popped. I'm watching myself react to this. Something has popped in this room and I have no idea what it is. So for a guy that can't pick up smoke in a dram at the best of times, he's not going to pick up smoke in the room. And with only one ear, I only hear from one ear, I couldn't tell which direction the pop had come from. 
I worked out that it was a blown uh, power supply, a capacitor and a power supply from the up one of the blue, one of these blue up lighters. Uh, while I was live, the thing just blew up. So there you go. Never talk about anything other than whiskeys in the V-pub and certainly not gin. Hell's Wed is saying that bald moment was hilarious. Uh, Ped Rolf is in there and he's having a laugh as well. Uh, and Jimmy Legg is saying that is the definition of pulling a face. Red Mordecai is saying, yes, I remember that pop. It made me jump. Hi. <laughs> You can see that it made me jump too. <laughs> My wife watched that the next day and she laughed uncomfortably for me. <laughs> she laughed so loud and heartily. And I have a suspicion that when she's feeling a wee bit down, she's got that point time stamped in that video. That she goes back to watch me cowering <laughs> like a child <laughs> uh, to cheer her up a wee bit but that happened live and I I guess it's going to happen when you're going uh, live from time to time and you just need to try and roll with it sometimes duck and roll literally what I wanted to do tonight is I wanted to reach out to fellow creators in the form of the Scotch Test Dummies and so many others that are out there that I could have reached out to tonight so many fantastic friends that make content to share with you on YouTube it's wonderful to call them friends as well um, but Scott was able to come in tonight. I'm so grateful that he did. Uh, Scott Adamson from Tomatin as well, I wanted to reach out to because he was literally one of the first in the industry that stepped forward and was brave enough to, to walk into this environment. Uh, Donald Rance is here from Canada. He's bought me a dram. Congrats in three years, Roy. The pubs have been a refuge of sanity during these crazy times. Thank you for all that you've done for this community. Thank you, Donald. You're one of the regulars. You're always there. It's wonderful and reassuring to have you hanging out with me, my friend. Cheers, Donald. Thank you. But what I wanted to do as well was to reach out to somebody from the community. But it just wasn't kind of a random name. It had to be somebody that somebody I've connected with, somebody that's become a friend, somebody that I know to talk to um, on a different level than just speaking to them live. Because that's happened right across this lounge, the live streams. That's what that's the community it's created. There are friendships in here, there are clubs forming. Literally live right now you people connect with each other i if i know that people are in the same geographical location i try to connect them together i try to encourage that sense of community becoming deeper so then the only question was do i reach to somebody local or do i reach to somebody in a far-flung place because that's the wonder of youtube and the technology isn't it we can reach across borders we can reach to every corner of the globe and then i thought well why can't it be both why can't I reach out to somebody that's as humble and unassuming and as quiet as this guy in the blue t-shirt that you see here? <laughs> this was a fantastic night. It's one of my favorite pictures that the VPUB has ever created. In one shot, you have this wonderful celebration, raucous and victory, and Scott Monroe kilted moose right underneath, humble and defeat, in fact, cowering. And off to the other side, we've got... Uh, the editor of Malt Review and Jason Julie are there just reflecting on his choices and Ben trying to decipher how he's doing. Ben from Whiskey Geek, currently on hiatus due to a young family. I hope to see him return. And then the shock and surprise of Vin from No Nonsense Whiskey in the bottom corner as well. That was, of course, the blind tasting that I did about a year ago. It was about December time, just coming up to Christmas last year. Very much of a, of a mind to do a rerun of that again. And I'm just working out how to best handle it and refine it for the future. But I thought, wouldn't it be amazing if I can reach out to the local guy who is far flung and welcome him in, in the shape of our friend, Gregor McQuee. <laughs> how are you, buddy? Ah, oh, tremendous. That made me laugh. Yeah, I have to say, I take I take my hat off to your humility in that picture there. <laughs> Puffing your chest out. It's like a football celebration there. It was like that something that you might have done on Thursday night when Scotland scored that, when, sorry, when Scotland saved that last penalty, right? Yeah. I imagine that you'd have done something similar. You were very pleased that night. Yeah, absolutely. Start as you mean to go on, I believe. Uh, so, you know, you just get 100% Gregor from day one. Well, you were you were nervous about stepping forward for that blind challenge, not because it was a blind challenge, but because it was going to be a blind challenge live that we were going to be doing live and looking for feedback and insight and tasting notes. And you said, look, right, to, compared to you guys, Roy, I'm in whiskey kindergarten, but I want the VPUB to be about inclusivity, everybody, and I don't care where they are in their whiskey journey. They're never going to be made to feel 
like they're in kindergarten or foolish or silly or like they don't know enough because they're still part of the, the, the community. But you step forward and you ended up doing very, very well in that blind challenge as we saw there, your celebration. Yeah, no, I know. And, and you know, that um, inclusivity, I think, is is one of the best things that you bring and, and you've created. But, um, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to compete in any more. That was it, one and done. <laughs> you can rest on your laurels. You, yeah. You've managed the pass mark. You're just going to go walk off exactly. into the sunset and not do it again. Yeah, just, just like how Scotland were once beating Brazil 1-0, that was enough. D- done. Nin- was that 1998? Yeah, on a, yeah, John Collins' penalty, I think. That's right. That's right. Um, that was the last time we were at an inter- Anyway, I don't want to get distracted oh, by the last time we were at an inter- It's happening again next year and it's to be celebrated. Anyway, but that's point that I make. You're a local guy. You're, you're from Edinburgh. If I got in the car, I'd be at your house in about half an hour. But actually, where you are right now, you're out in the West Coast of America. So for you, there's almost that sense of connecting with back home, but also this massive network of whiskey folk right across Local to you, where you are on the West Coast, in the form of, I guess, Christine Deems, Phil and Deepa, perhaps, Eric Waits out there as well, so many more. Um, but also you've been able to connect with so many people globally through through this community. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It was, um, I've been trying to track back and remember the first times that I was, much like some other people now today, like just just becoming aware of the community and commenting. And and it was, it's much like you say, you know, like my first contact was was here in Portland connecting on YouTube through that portal. And yeah, I was kind of connecting back to someone that's that speaks like me, but at the same time, I was then getting a connection made with Christine Deems, um, who, you know, we've got to know each other. We've not yet met properly. We mule whiskey to each other all around right. the place. Um, and I included, we managed to reach out to Phil and Deepa and include them in, in a blind that we, we set up once. Um, so yeah, it's a fantastic um, conduit. Um, and, and connecting it's brilliant yeah and brilliant. it's very much a pleasure for me to have you as a part of it because it's not just the fact that I quite like you it's more than that it's the fact that you're very warm and welcoming to the other folk in the, in the lounge and I think that's very much part of the culture that we're trying to build here is the fact that people can step in and speak and be welcomed and be made to it doesn't matter how you how you pray how you vote where you live how you look or it's the fact that people through whiskey, we can see the person and just enjoy a wee bit of time away from all the hang-ups that we might perhaps indulge in outside of that. Um, and I notice how much of a good, um, let's call you, I don't know, an ambassador for the V-Pub or certainly a welcoming force like all the other guys that are in here, like like Doc, McAllen, Fine and Rare, the star that he is, he's He's just a lovely, warm, welcoming guy, and he wants to always look out for everybody, the same as uh, the other people that have looked after me over the years, the Whiskey Jasons, the Alistair Greys, the CVs, the, the other moderators I have. And then the names that have been around forever, like the Tony Evans, is the, the, El, the uh, Rolf, Ebhead Rolf. And, and so many of these people I've been able to meet in real life, and I've had the pleasure of meeting you a few times, or a couple of times, in real life too, despite you being out there on the West Coast. And I think that's something that I didn't expect. I knew that I'd be able to communicate and maybe email and message and get to know names perhaps. But the amount of people that I've been able to shake their hands, raise a glass together, um, it's it's been great fun. It's been really, really great fun. No, no, you're spot on. Um, It's interesting you you would coin it an ambassador. Um, I, I actually have a bottle of (laughs) <laughs> um, that you know I, I'm, I'm happy to to represent and i can do my best ambassador role if you want i I've, this is a you, you've shared a few firsts i could maybe share my first whiskey review uh with you right now if you would indulge me right okay okay well i'll just let you yeah away. Well, it's an interesting you know we're, we're, we're super excited to have a, a, a you know a really large and proud uh, your, your statement, you know, we've not had that yet. It's not officially been able to be called a whiskey, um, you know. And then if if we look at the label, you know, we can see that it's it's ABV reflects its founder, nice. and and it's not un unchill filtered. It's it's filtered by a few blue spanners only. You know, I think they let they let most everything go through. It's pretty <laughs> good. I think it's a good thing. And you yes. know, if, if we talk on the color, 
it must have been a, a sunny day in Glasgow because normally it's Peely Wally, but this has got quite a good colour to it. With taps thought, off. Yeah, I would say so. Um, if you can further indulge me, Roy, I do. Yes. Actually, I have some notes on the on the spirit. Right, okay, good. Okay, I'll strap in for this. Go ahead. So, on the nose, th there's no whiff of snobbery here. Um, and, and funnily enough, it, it's not as hot as the ABV suggests. It's more like that the gentle heat you feel when entering a pub that's, that's full to bursting. Almost as if there's 300 people crammed into a front room. All in all, a welcoming first impression. Shall I move on to the palette? There's more. Fantastic. Well, there's part, there's Let me lap this up. This is a nice dram. This is this is a very nice dram. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, it is. It's good. It's good. So on the palette, a lot of character here, or should I say characters, with such a mix of profiles that could that could easily clash, but no, nope, there's no such thing here. Um, it's well-rounded, caring and sharing dram that more than delivers what the nose promised. Shall I, shall I take it home on the finish? Go for it. <laughs> well, it uh, make me great. <laughs> so, nah. So on the finish, for those that stick around, the finish can be a little testy. The picture becomes clearer in the middle, and yet there's always a, a vague bittersweet taste of asshat that lingers and inevitably stops most of us from ranking it a 10 out of 10. <laughs> only, only one word can sum up this three-year-old V-pub. Fantastic. Ah, oh, Jesus Christ. Uh, excuse my language, but Gregor, thank you so much. Thank you. That's uh, That was lovely. That was a nice surprise. I knew nothing of that. <laughs> I knew that you were thinking of coming up with something, some words, I think you said, but that's really cool. Um, and if, if we're allowed to stretch metaphors, that's a perfect way to do it. Thank you very much, buddy. That's wonderful words. And I think Cheers. brilliantly sums up so many things. Cheers, buddy. Slanja. Yes, and uh, for so many, um, that bitter finish means that it's difficult to celebrate a 10 out of 10 at times. <laughs> so many people, you should see all the emojis in the chat lighting up, people saying fantastic, people really appreciative of that, um, very much giving them their place, just brilliant stuff. Thank you, my friend. I think that I have to say that um, you, you're definitely one of the gentlemen in the community you're good fun you're that i think that extrovert nature that you have helps you a lot it means that you're happy to reach out and help welcome people in but honestly i could have picked so many of the folk in the chat tonight um as the v pub's gone along i've had a chance to welcome so many of these guys in live and um, but i think it was appropriate to bring in uh, gregor McQuee tonight uh, the local guy who's out in the states um, and the guy who's been uh, enjoying hanging out with me for so long I'm very grateful for it, Gregor. Thank you very much, my friend. Cheers. Cheers, Roy. Are we going to have a wee game of Is It A Space Aid before you go? Yeah, absolutely. Have you played this before? I have. I wasn't brave enough to go guessing. I would. Yeah, all my work went into that uh, the whiskey review. So That's okay. That, that means that you've got a bottle on hand then, right? Yeah. And it's a, it's a single malt core range whiskey available everywhere, right? Yes. Excellent stuff. Listen, if anybody wants to give Gregor a wee thumbs up, a wee like for that, it helps the channel hugely. And I'm always very, very grateful for all the support that you give. It doesn't cost anything to leave a wee thumbs up. If you want to leave a down thumb, that's fine too. It's all a uh, uh, YouTube interaction. Um, anyway, we're going to have a wee game of uh, Is It A Space Aid? And I'm guessing again, let's see if I can pull the same uh, rescue that I did the last time round. Okay, buddy. I'm going to obviously ask you, is it a space aid? No. No. Is it a Highland? Yes. For the second time tonight, we're in the Highlands. Let's take a different route this time. Let's ask if it's got an age statement. It does. Of course, it's Gregor McQuee, I should have assumed. <laughs> um, is it Owned by one of the big four, Diageo, Pernod Ricard, Edrington, or Grants? Mm, it's not. If Dolwini is the centre of the map, is it north or south of Dolwini? It would be north of Dolwini. Oh, sorry. I would I would ask, is, is it north of Dolwini? You'd say yes. Yes. Okay. Um Okay. 
thinking about what's up there. Inverhouse have got Old Pulteney. They're not one of the big four. Hey, we've got Dalmore. Glen Ord is Diageo. We've got Tomatin. Who else is, is north in the Highlands? Okay, let's go a bit further. Is it 46% or above? Yes. Ooh, it's got an age statement. It's 46% or above, so it could be 46%. Um, have I mentioned it already? <laughs> That's an ass hat. Uh, <laughs> okay, we, we don't, we we don't get that one. I don't, I don't think we give that. that. Sorry? I don't think we let you get that question, do we? Right, don't worry, don't worry. We'll, we'll work another way around it. Um, is it owned by Inverhouse? Yes. It is? Yes. <laughs> That's the smallest, the tiniest, little, meekest. Is that a yes? Is that a yes? Yeah, say it. Disappointed. Yes. <laughs> is it Old Pulteney? No. It's north of Dolwani. Is Who did it you Anok say? 24? Oh, yeah, beauty. <laughs> Unreal. Oh, yeah, beauty. <laughs> did you win a sniper coin last time? I didn't, no. Right, you win it tonight, buddy. You win it tonight. <laughs> <laughs> there you go with the post. Fantastic. <laughs> Thanks for stepping forward. You won it tonight because it's the three year anniversary. And honestly, anybody that's willing to step up and do this live, anybody is welcome to do this. Send me an email if you fancy a game of this. You don't need to be guessing like I did there. You can just have a bottle on hand. It's fine. Um, and uh, you can play a game and try and win yourself a sniper coin. These cannot be purchased. The sniper coins can only be gifted or one like this. Uh, Mark Goins has bought a tram, uh, a, a very generous tram. Mark, thank you so much. Congrats on three years. I have so many friends from my two years and nine months attending the VPUB. Ah, you're a newbie, Mark, of course. <laughs> Thanks for unlocking the doors, Slancha. Mark, what a wonderful sent sentiment. Thank you so much. Cheers, Mark Goins. The man behind the compass over my shoulder. Gregor, my friend, my Edinburgh friend, that automatically means that if you were still living here, the chances of us being friends would be fairly remote, I think, unless you tuned <laughs> into the VPUB, I guess. But I'm, I'm, I'm blessed and it's a pleasure to call you a friend and I'm very grateful that you stepped forward tonight. Uh, stay till the quiz at the end if you can, buddy. And uh, thank you for everything that you've contributed to the VPUB, you and all of our friends in the community. Uh, I'll raise my last wee dreep of this Kuboken. Slanche Gregor McQuay, cheers. Cheers, Roy. See you soon, my friend. Wonderful stuff. I told you, I warned everyone that this would be very, very self-indulgent tonight. Um, you know, if we don't, I didn't I didn't celebrate a million views. I didn't celebrate 10,000 subscribers. I didn't celebrate one year or two years. Um, just, just this wee thing, this three years just seemed appropriate. On Sunday night, I've got a patron-only live stream. I'm going to go do a lock-in with patrons on Sunday night. And that will be literally within about 24 hours of the three-year anniversary, so I'll be able to hang out with them as well. It's going to be a good one because um, I'll share it with, with uh, patrons. But a week from tonight, I'll be back again with another VPUB, and I'll be back to regular business. It'll be back to regular themes and whiskey topics, far less kind of self-indulgent. Um, I have to say, I, I shouldn't apologise because I've enjoyed this tonight. I've enjoyed celebrating you and what we have built together. Um, and I think it's okay to give up, sacrifice the occasional VPUB to a wee celebration to us now and again, especially in what is a ridiculously difficult year. I'm very mindful that I've not interacted with the Barflies very much tonight, but Jimmy Legacy saying, feels like an episode of the Psychic Friends Network. <laughs> ah, yeah. if, if it wasn't Old Pulteney, it could only be Nanox, so Eastern Highlands, so then what would Gregor have on hand? It's going to be the 24. Alistair Gray is saying, Dan Daniel Vermas, winner there, spreadsheet updated. Daniel Vermas, you star, he's in tonight and he's managed to snag himself a sniper coin. Daniel over in Hungary. Thank you very much, my friend, for participating and congratulations on winning yourself a sniper coin. Hellswood is saying, I think you're allowed a wee bit of self-indulgence now again. Thank you, Helen. I agree. 
Neil Cochran, my friend Neil, also in Glasgow as well. These guys, Neil Cochran and his buddy Dave Crichton, who I actually reached out to to see if he wanted to participate tonight because he was in possession of a very particular take on the VPUB. He loved the channel. He was a watcher and supporter of the channel, Dave Crichton, precarious Dave, uh, and his friend Neil. But while Neil was coming into the VPUBs, Dave couldn't understand why anybody would give up two hours plus of their Thursday night to watch a whiskey live stream. That didn't make any sense to Dave. He's a great guy, Dave. However, this year, he's a regular. He's not here tonight, he's doing something else tonight, but we always see Dave in, and I wanted to hear his take on that. And he's admitted that what got him tuning in was the situation we found ourselves in in lockdown, and what's hooked him in to make him come back again is the community. So when I say community, I'm not just saying, oh, community, community. It's real. It's the lifeblood of the channel. It's what gives this its breathing um, heartbeat, its, its culture, its humour, its insight, its knowledge, its pool of knowledge. If you're thinking about a whiskey, if you're wondering whether to buy a whiskey, just put it in the chat. Say, I'm thinking of this. What do you think? You'll get an instant feedback from knowledgeable whiskey enthusiasts and passionate people okay let's see uh what we're going to do we're going to where are we on time uh, oh not too bad actually can i do it in less than two hours maybe maybe it's i maybe it's no um i do want to i do want to um bring scott and gregor back in for the quiz at the end again and the quiz at the end, of course, it has a wee bit of a theme tonight, but it's not a difficult theme. I think, and I genuinely, I know it's become a bit, bit of an in-joke, I think I've pitched the quiz easy tonight. I'm hoping that on the three-year anniversary, I get some of the barflies are able to use their 10 out of 10 emoji tonight. So I'm hopeful that if anybody's interested in staying for the quiz, please do, because I'm hoping that I've pitched the questions just a notch or two <laughs> easier than it usually is. I'm going to pour a wee dram to drink along with the quiz and you guys. Cresimir is here, the Sniper King is in saying, Aquavite, you are the you're the heart of this and we are your lungs. Cresimir, that's wonderful to hear, that's wonderful to read. Don't be getting me upset and emotional by saying such nice things, less nice things. I'm going to read out a couple of things, actually, that came from the community. I went to patrons and asked them, do you want to say anything? And of course, they gave me pages of response, really, really difficult things to read. I wanted it to be about the VPUB and the community and the thing, and but so much of it was very, very personal about me and things, and it was wonderful to read and very reassuring. Um, but I'm just going to touch on a couple of things. I'm just going to pick out a couple. Uh, Red Sox is in. I, I think that's Andy. I think you're Andy, Red Sox. Well done for three years of the VPUB. Bought me a dram. Thank you very much for your generous dram, my friend. I hope I've got your name right. I hope it is indeed Andrew. Cheers. I'm going to start, um, I'll read the first of these comments um, that were that were left in Patreon and I'll read the, the last one um, and just kind of mention some of the other people that left comments because this is cool for you to hear as well. It's not just, um, anyway, Menno in Belgium, my friend Menno is saying congrats first and foremost. You didn't just build a channel, you built a community a fellow whiskey enthusiasts, people from all over the world who connected with you and your journey and through that with each other. Personally, I gradually rolled into it, and it was the first time ever when I felt at home with my overly nerdy eagerness to learn and explore what whiskey has to offer. As it turned out, it may have been the whiskey that brought me here, but it was you and the community that made me come back to it time and time again. Three years on, the VPUB has become something that is held dearly by all of us. It has been a gateway to listen, watch, and learn a lot about all things whiskey, often from you and your guests, but, most, but also from the lounge. To be able to meet all these wonderful people, literally from right around my corner, all the way across Europe and beyond, is a remarkable thing. It's fair to say that the VPUB has become a time and a place to chill and relax and to engage with you, with the whiskey, and with fellow barflies. Please do self-indulge on this one. Now more than ever, it's important to celebrate these things. It's one of my most precious me time, us time moments. So thank you. Here's to another three and then some. Menno, thank you for those amazing words. Encompasses the spirit of what this has ended up being quite amazingly. Then we had 
Uh, wonderful words from Blair Conrad, that's Jimmy Legg over in Canada, from Marcus Kreitner and Christina in Austria, from Frank Peathead Geertz, who actually put the lyrics of Cheers, the song where everybody knows your name. He put that in the comment and gave it context and gave it value. Amazing to read. Hey, I'm not reading it tonight because there's uh, it's, it would be difficult for me to keep it together. James Burgoyne, wonderful words. Era McFault, my friend Era from Belgium. I've been able to meet Era a few times as well. Matthew Citric, even Matthew Citric over there in uh, uh, Texas, head of the Whiskey Crusaders channel. Wonderful man. And I've managed to meet him and he put in some wonderful words as well as Tony Nelson. Brian Calavi, that's Brian over, I think, in, if it's not Rhode Island, I think it's Massachusetts, but uh, that's Kilco Brian, putting some amazing words as well. Talked about his personal situation too, Gary Cobb, Gary Cobb in the UK. Fantastic, Gary, thank you so much. Helen Widdowson and Andy wrote some wonderful words. Been on the channel a few times, so many of the names I'm reading out you've, you've met. Uh, Uncorked, that's Alan, I think that's Alan Manchester. Um, some amazing words from Alan from Ross, Ross Mashburn over in South Carolina. Alan McLaughlin, a local boy in Glasgow. Eric Cunliffe in Canada. And the last comment here I've got is from Scott Monroe. You know him as Kilted Moose. One of the classiest, most kind gentlemen you'll meet. A local Glaswegian as well. Scott says, hard to believe the V-Pub's been up and running for three years. Time flies when there's bottles to pop, share and enjoy, right? This channel means a lot to me. And I'm sure it does for all the other barflies who eagerly look forward to buzzing in every Thursday evening for a dram and a socially distanced chat. Roy has not only helped create a and foster a beautiful welcoming community with the VPUB, but he's done it with knowledge, insight into the strength that we all hold dear. The brilliant guests, the easy quizzes, Roy's generosity of spirit is frankly amazing to be a wee part of this wonderful VPUB community through the channel. I have had the incredible fortune to meet and share drams with some of the community people who I consider friends that have quite simply enriched my life. This simply would not have been possible without Roy's time and dedication. Who could forget that night at the pot still before the Glasgow Whiskey Festival when barflies from all over the world when after I brought around the call went up for us all to display our challenge coin. And of course, I had left mine at home, so back to the bar I trotted. Not that I begrudged it. It was magic just to share another round with brilliant people who had been brought together by this whiskey-soaked Thursday night session. Roy has also kindly invited me onto the VPUB on several occasions, but those are perhaps best left to one side, especially after Sevi, the whiskey alchemist, and I gave a less than Oscar-winning performance live from Roy's house last December. So here's to you, Roy, the channel, and all the other barflies all over the world. It's probably my round again, says Scott. Scott, it was a pleasure to have you here. I've met you so many times in the past. I remember the time I met Scott. I knew Scott before I created content. I knew him from this community. When I started to create content, the Scotch Four Dummies over in Minneapolis. Is it Minneapolis? No, it's Indiana. Um, Indianapolis, there you go. Um, they were, we were on a live stream together. Scott and I were on a live stream. I think I was guesting and he was in the community and they said, you're in the same town, why don't you meet up? And I said, I know we've not met up, Scott. I had an extra ticket, a spare ticket for a Ralphie tasting. Um, and I said, Scott, you want to come along? And we met and we've been friends ever since then. It's got to be at least three years ago. Um, it's amazing that this friendship, this connectedness, this thing that whiskey does for us, we need to be grateful for it. I think um, and as the world ticks on and gives us challenges right, left and centre, it's amazing to have this escapism, this celebration, this very, very positive spin on time. So Scott, to you, to all my patrons, to all my supporters, to all the barflies, to all the community, the beautiful whiskey folk, for everyone that supported and made this grow and give it the life and the heartbeat over the last three years, I raise a glass to all of you and say thank you so, so much, Slajivara. In honour of that wee piece from Scott, I'm going to open a gift that has been far too long waited, sealed as an ornament for just a bit too long. This is a Laphroaig 10 cast strength. This is batch 10. This is a gift given to me by Scott Kilted Moose back in 2018. There we go. 
for full effect. Cheers, Scott, and thanks to everybody. Thanks to Jimmy Legg, Blair, Con Blair Conrad in Canada. May I say that you folks are simply the best. Little did I know that I would meet such great people so late in life. This is not me. This is... Cheers to you, my friends. I sure hope uh, to shake your hands soon. Jimmy, we will meet one day. If I have to come to Nova Scotia, no, Nova Scotia it will happen. Um, it's just a question of when. I'll raise a glass to Jimmy, to Scott Monroe, to every one of you and say thank you so much. Maybe now I can go over myself and stop the self-indulgence and just get back to the VPUB. Cheers, Slanchevar. That's Lefroig. If you want to engage with Lefroig, The cast strength is the way to do it, honestly speaking. Wonderfully bold, really, really rich. Challenging, robust, iodine, salt, brine. Savory, is it bacon? Is it umami? Is it something? If it's bacon, it's there's a sweetness. Excellent whiskey. Unfortunately, in the UK, it's still the case that we have to go to the distillery to get it. Maybe not now, maybe not with the current situation, but it's usually something that's uh, exported. And if you want it in the UK, you need to get it at auction or through a specialist or at the distillery direct. Anyway, uh, Thirsty Steve is here. That looks like a new name. Thirsty Steve, it's nice to welcome you in. He's saying, keep sucking it up. You deserve it. Eric Wait, again, another fantastic guy I've been able to hug and hold hands over the years. Fellow creator, Eric Waite Whiskey Studies, putting out great content on YouTube as well, saying I'll catch the replay tomorrow. Might be a tough one for you to get through, Eric, honestly. It's been a, a different VPUB tonight. Um, but thank you to Jimmy and thank you to Eric Waite for your drams cheers. Looking forward to the next time I can welcome you on these shores, Eric. Okay, Danny is saying, cheers, Roy. Cheers to you, Dan. Neil Laverty is saying, the reason that we are here is you, gentlemen. Uh, Chris is saying, batch 11 and 12 are on Amazon. Fantastic. So we can occasionally, <laughs> thanks to Mr. Bezos, get it on, on Amazon. Helen is saying, to paraphrase, the last sentence in our comments on Patreon, uh, can you give a huge thank you to the amazing lady, wife, and family for allowing us to indulge in this fabulous pastime with you? I will do, Helen. I very much will do. Thank you so much. In fact, I might just give her all of these comments as a wee bit of bedtime reading to see at least that, that you know, it's appreciated. Uh, it's fantastic. Triketra Stewart is saying, uh, we watch on the TV most of the time, so don't comment, but delighted to meet both of you in 2019 and become part of the Barflies. And Stuart and Jules over there. And no, you're not in Edinburgh. You're in Lanarkshire. And I think you're in Lanarkshire, Stuart. Uh, Triketra, my friend, I... I Hi, thank you very much. It was a pleasure to meet you last year. Those days will return. And Eric is saying, when I feel homesick, it's for Scotland. You loved it here, Eric. I know that it connected with you on a very, very emotional level. Anyway, now that I've been gassing for all that time, it's time to ask my friends if they're willing to join live for this wee quiz at the end. Give me a thumbs up, Scott and Gregor, if you're good. Gregor and Scott, thank you for hanging out in the background. I have to just reassure myself that you would have been watching anyway, and all you've done is just watch from the green room, right? Pretty much, pretty Good. much. We've Good. been messaging back and forth trying to figure out how on earth you have sniped both of those drams. That's outrageous. <laughs> it's, it's, it's at a Rain Man level, you know? It just <laughs> comes out in nowhere. Aye, I, I don't, I know, and, and I don't know if, even a year ago, I don't know if I could have, I could have done it quite as well. But it's interesting that that game makes you visualise the Scotch landscape in a different way. It gives the geography a kind of structure. It makes you think about who owns who, what distillery, who present, it, who presents it at what age statement, what ABV. It makes you understand what core range and what special release. Um, 
Aye, that's me trying to justify that that game isn't just fun, that it's educational. I'm curious, I'm, curious what, fun. I'm curious what goes in your head there when you're doing it. Are you, have you got all the bottles lined up in your head and they all just start falling away with it? And you just well, uh, honestly speaking, the, the Highlands is the hugest region, right, for Scotch whiskey. It's massive geographically, but the distilleries are sparse. Mm. Even with the new distilleries coming along like Ardemurchan, um, Nicknean and, and, and newer, newer distilleries appearing, it's, they're still sparse. Um, and as long as you're on the mainland, and that's where I, I was lucked out tonight, because I just went with the mainland on both of them. And if, if you'd have been on the islands, perhaps I'd, I'd have started to struggle a wee bit, right? Because I never, I never differentiated between the two. So I was lucky that they were on the mainland in the end, actually. Um, uh, Gigi has said, happy anniversary, Aquavite. Can't wait till next. Uh, I think Gigi UK is, is Jules, I think. Stuart's wife. Uh, I hope I'm right. Anyway, thank you for your dram, Gigi. Cheers to you. Anyway, I am glad that I managed to snipe. I was on the ropes with Scott with, with that. I mean, that was uh, a Fetter Cairn 12. What is that? It's 42% or something, is it? Is no, it's, it's down 40. to 40, actually. 40. Yep. Yep. I know, the 42% is the 28-year-old. Aye. For 480 quid. For 480 pounds, you get 2% more. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, tell you Listen, what, though, I, I don't want to knock that whiskey. I got to try that whiskey, and it was delectable. It was really lovely. Um, But it's, it's kind of like... I, some things happen in whiskey and you just don't understand. Anyway, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna have a that's not gonna be what it's about tonight. Um we're gonna we're gonna just try and get through this quiz. There's no way we're gonna do it in two hours, but it doesn't matter. Um we're 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 not going on too long tonight. Um I'm asking you you both if you're ready to have a wee go at the quiz at the end for anybody that's joining for the first time tonight is 10 questions the pass mark is five it's multiple choice so even if you're guessing you've got a one in three chance of getting it right there are some banana skins in there some things that you might think are right but you need to get to give it a pause a skip extra thought and inevitably there will be as des is pointing out with the ass hat emojis there may be an ass hat question more often than not it tends to be the last just to kind of rip the guts out of you when you think you're ready to bag a 10 out of 10. And Roy, Roy, I know we normally play, it's, it's, you're only playing against yourself, but how's about, Scott, you and I put something up on the line for who gets the most? I'll let that fly on the condition that whoever wins it has to give it to somebody in the community. Oh, aye, okay. Gregor's looking for a cask of PX, it sounds like. <laughs> <laughs> I figure that out. What What are you wanting to put up, Gregor? I don't know. A, dra a dram of choice, I guess. No, let, let me suggest the prize is a small something that you can ship legally. Right. So a wee flight of three samples, three or four samples. A wee our selection. Top, how about our top three? I think you know. Aye, let's your go, top let's three that's open or on hand, something like that. There we go. Right. Yeah. All right. Good. And if, if, whoever picks it up tonight, um, I guess, who, who's it going to go to? In the, we'll ask a wee question at the end or something, will we, for somebody to bag a wee flight tonight. And then uh, through me, I'll make sure that it's somebody that's of a legal drinking age and that there's a, that somebody that we know or that we can establish that is uh, in the right place to legally ship it to. How about that? Yeah, okay. sounds, sounds good. good. And it's just a personal exchange. Precarious Dave has joined tonight. Dave, you got a bit of a mention tonight. Um, as long as uh, um, it's nice to see you, and I, I don't I think it was a family thing that you had on, um, but I told a wee tale about you tonight, wondering why anybody would join a two hour live stream. And here you are. Thank you very much, buddy. Okay, everyone, let's get the quiz underway. Question one there is a theme tonight. Let's see if we can spot it. Who spots it first, uh, Gregor or Scott? Question one Which of these have recently been released? with a label saying aged three years. It says this, it says this on the label. Should we be seeing a, a PowerPoint right now? You don't, oh, absolutely. Well done. I wondered why Scott was looking so. <laughs> Thank you for keeping me right. 
See, as soon as you switch off the the kind of the feed, you, you just lose. There we go. That's it. You can see it now, right? Yeah. Okay. Question one: Which of these has recently have recently been released with the label aged three years? It said this on the label: A. Arda Murchin. This is the inaugural, the AD 2001. B. Ard Beggs, We Beastie. Or C. Octomore 10.4. One of those three recently released whiskies had the words aged three years written on the label. Not a common thing, but this whiskey had it. One out of one. Thank you. Are we <laughs> confident? Are we confident, Scott? I uh, reasonably. Reasonably. Elimination rather than knowledge. Well, that sometimes that's the ploy. Sometimes that's the best practice is to kind of take away the one that you know isn't, and then it gives you a 50-50, I guess. So the, this is actually splitting the crowd more than I expected. I'll ask you, Scott, what would you suggest it might be? I reckon. I know. Well, I stop, bet. stop, stop, stop. I have to stop. Do you know what we have to do since there's something at stake? There's actually something at stake tonight. Is that you have to have a wee piece of paper with B, C, and A written on it. Uh, Fantastic. Okay. okay, hang on. And then just hold it up. Hold it up like this. So we yeah. can see at the same time what you're answering. And that, that way you're not following each other. Just a, hang on. That's fair enough, isn't it? Yeah. Yep. That's the way that Roddy and I had to play it last week. Menno was the host last week, so I got to take my, a wee taste of my own medicine. I got to participate in the quiz. It was a pleasure. It was a really good quiz with great questions as well. Um, I think, oh, the majority. Oh, no, this is splitting the room. After three, two, oh, wait, wait, one, pardon. show us what your A and C, and it's splitting you guys as well. One of you is going to be raucous and victory, while the other is humble and <laughs> defeat. I can tell you that it's Octomore, oh. 10.4. Sorry, Gregor. Yes, that's the pose, Scott. <laughs> that's the pose. Now, now, um, no, can, I, can I go back to that point when Gregor said, one out of one, ho, ho, ho. <laughs> I have to say that Arda Markin have just released their inaugural, but they waited a wee bit longer than most in the spirit in that inaugural release. I understand to be around five years. Regardless, it doesn't say on the label on that Octomore, the 10.4 release, Octomores can be various ages, but they are inevitably tend to be quite young. There have been 10-year-old releases, etc. But on the 10.4, it, it said aged three years on the label. And it was still about 170 quid, I think. <laughs> Anyway, um, two, Ballantines was the branding used to release malts from which three Perno distilleries? So they released them as single malts with the distillery name on there, but under the branding Ballantines. This is going back a couple of years, I think maybe to 2017. Were the three distilleries A, Glenburgie, Milton Duff and Glen Talkers? Was it B, Turmore, Longmourners in Scapa? Or was it C, Aberler, Glenlivet and Glen Keith? Whiskey Jason is driving the lounge tonight, giving me some definition in the chat so I can see what's happening. Thanks, Jason. Welsh Dora is here saying Octomore becomes even more. <laughs> I'm not even going to say that out loud. Nice to see you in Welsh. Nice to, to welcome you always, my friend. You were perhaps one of the very, very first as well. You might have joined the original uh, 39 strong live stream three years ago. It's always nice to welcome you in, my friend. I hope you're doing well. Peter Box thinks it's A. Um, so, oh, wow, there's there's common agreement here. I'm going to ask you for your guesses, boys, on three, two, one. All of you think it's A, and the, ma the vast, vast, vast majority um, of uh, form. Yes, you're absolutely right, Thomas. One of my kind of ticks, let's say, when I'm typing, is to try to type the word from, and I type form. It's the same with sales. I, I try to type sales and I write slays to the point that I often make a mistake and it's added to the dictionary and it's forever perpetuates. I apologize, but hopefully you've, you're able to decipher the question. I think that's to do with your, is that when you're typing? Yes, it's the it's speed. Do, it's, it's one hand is faster than the other. Yeah, exactly that. 
it's the it's the it's the obviously the O and the R in that case. But it's a common common thing. And the trouble is, is that uh, spell checkers and things don't pick that up. So the amount of articles I've written, the amount of posts that I've <laughs> released there, where I mean to write from and it's form, it's very very common. It's a bit of a tick, like I say. But you're absolutely right, boys. Uh, Glenn Burgey, Milton Duff, and Glenn Talkers. Uh, looking at the crowd, uh, the vast majority of them got that absolutely right. I've got a wee picture here. Most of these are sold out now, actually. This was a fantastic thing that I got really excited about because Pernod Ricard don't usually represent these distilleries as single malts. Um, I have to have a wee gripe about it, despite the 15-year age statement, it went out at 40%. A wee bit of a shame because something as fruity as Glen Talkers, something as complex as Glen Burgey, and something as rare as Milton Duff, honestly, to go out at 40%, I think they missed a trick. Because the Ballantines market, I don't know if they were picking that up. I think that this would be pointed more towards enthusiasts. And this was an opportunity for them to do a wee bit better. Regardless, these whiskies got good feedback and they probably deserved it as well. It's a funny one, Roy, isn't it? Because it sounds like, you know, like you say, they've, they've figured out uh, their target, but then you just, 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 just miss it just a bit, you know? It's like so many releases that you see. It's like, ah, oh... Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of like that feeling. It's this like I mean that would have been an amazing thing. Um, is, Scott, I don't know, Scott Adamson, have you seen this from Perno? I am super excited about that. I've been having conversations about that with a few folk as well. I love that idea. Um, I think it's a really cool way. You know, I've got to appreciate that Glenlivet's one of the biggest brands in the world. So when brands like Glenlivet and Glenfiddich do things that are a little bit more, um. Of peace, geek, geeky, you know, that's it's yeah. for people like us, you know, in nature, you know. I think things like that, things like the Glenfiddich experimental series, no matter what your thoughts are on the individual products, the fact that they're doing it are brilliant. This Ballantine's thing as well, that strikes me almost like Ballantine's been an independent bottler and it had so much scope, but like you say, it just kind of fell short a little bit, which is a shame. I think it was very much pitched towards the Ballantine's drinker, so they could almost deconstruct a blend, so to speak. But my goodness, um, what it could have been to the enthusiasts, the people that this release really excited were enthusiasts that love these distilleries but don't get a chance to connect with them much, especially the owner's representation or what they believe to be their representation of the distillery rather than an indie doing a small batch or a single cask release. So it was almost there and not quite. This is a wonderful take. This is this is actually um, inspired, I would say, because they've taken Glenlivet, put the 12-year age statement on it, given it a different shaped bottle, different color of glass, called it a different name, written until filtered on it, presented it at 48% uh, ABV, given us everything that we're asking for, short of saying that it's natural color, of course, which is a shame given the color of the glass bottle. Um, this is a great step. Now, this isn't wonderfully, th this is a wee bit hot whiskey. It's just, it's almost there. But a wee splash of water brings it right in. It brings out that fruit. It makes the fruit much more accessible. It's very fruity on the nose, but it plays a wee bit spicy at 48%. You would expect that. You forgive it for that. But this I is a nice way to straddle that line between mass market and kind of natural presentation. It's clearly a different take. And that I makes sense to me from yeah. Glenlivet, who had yeah. the Nadura range out, of course. What I really appreciated about that one is the price point. You know, you can pick that up. I think it is only on Amazon, but it's under £40 at the moment for a 48% naturally presented whiskey. You know, normally, and, and it, it says limited edition now, we all know that's no, you're never going to find a number on that. But, you know, if you're looking for a 12-year-old limited edition, you're normally in excess of £60 nowadays. So for that to come out the way it has been, I'm really excited about that. It's a global release. We can only get it from Amazon in the UK, but it's this is going to be a... While it's limited, I hope that it's not limited, if that makes sense. Certainly it's available to everybody in most global markets, I believe. Yep. Um, it, it might be a short-term thing. It might be a toe in the water. But it's releases like that, Scott, that I want to celebrate because that's true. That's much more true to malt whiskey, I, I believe, rather than chill filtering, taking away, um, dropping it down, adding that water to it to drop it down to 40% like these ones here. Mm -hmm. uh, more of that, please, Perno, and less of this. Why don't you bring this out the way you've presented that? That amazing distilleries in, in your stewardship there, and you've given us this. 
It's almost, it's close, but no cigar. Sorry to, to whinge. Anyway, let's move on to question three and ask which word is used to describe three of the recognised Scotch whisky categories? Which of these adjectives is used for three categories? A, malt, B, blended, or C, grain? Roy, can I get a bonus point for, for pointing out that the theme is clearly the number three? Yes, you get the bonus point. Clawing it back. <laughs> <laughs> McAllen Fenerail, the doc is suggesting that the Glenlivet is uh, limited to less than one billion bottles. <laughs> I'm okay with that, Doc. That if that makes it its way to in, in every house, it's the right way in order to do it. And Akshay is saying, haven't seen it in France yet. Uh, keep me posted, Akshay. I, I'm not really sure. I, didn't, I don't have a press release or anything for it. Um, but I've seen it in social media posts. It is making its way out there. And not everywhere has to go through Amazon to get it. I think that the... Well, I can see that the lounge absolutely know what this is. You boys, how are you feeling? Show, hold up your ABC. Both think it's blended. Blended malt, blended grain, and blended Scotch whiskey, of course. The other two, malt only has blended malt and single malt and blended grain and single grain. There is a potential six category, single blend, of course, as well. From the likes of a Loch Lomond. Question four, which of these countries currently has only three malt distilleries? That's a tricky one. And I have to qualify this by saying this is according to the 2021 Malt Whiskey Yearbook, which as everybody knows is my Bible. Um, which of these countries has only three malt distilleries? A, Finland. B, Italy. C, Northern Ireland. There was one of the quizzes recently that I didn't uh, clearly state. I just gave the, the options and I wasn't clearly stating A, B and C. And somebody who was listening to it as they were jogging was a wee bit annoyed and said, Roy, some of us do genuinely listen to it podcast style. Please remember that we can't, re we can't see the presentation as we're jogging. <laughs> That's kind of cool, I thought. Somebody jogging to this. Can you imagine how slow the pace would be? <laughs> Now, did they happen to say that in either a Finnish, Italian, or Northern Irish accent? <laughs> uh, Glaswegian. <laughs> um, I'm trying to remember his name. I want to say that it's Mark, but I don't think it is. Um, but it was local because the visualization I had in my head was that he was jogging that uh, where I would jog. I actually have been running recently. I've been out for two runs with my wife. <laughs> So they, they might make a runner of me yet. Do you guys know this or would you be guessing? I'm guessing. I was a guess. It was my gut call, though. Show me your gut call. Hold them up. We have two Bs. Italy. Wow. I think the other distillery in Italy is, it's not an Italian name. I can't remember. But Puni. And one other makes it two. Northern Ireland has a few. And Finland has three. Oh. So if you answered A, give yourself a point. And I'll tell you that the three distilleries are Tiran Pili, of course, the one that we all know, Helsinki Distilling, and Valamo Distillery. I don't doubt that there's probably some newer or smaller distilleries other than that, but I just went from the book. I do apologise. If there are more distilleries in Finland, some of the Finnish barflies can chime in and tell us where we've gone wrong there. But that was the one tonight. If you answered A, give yourself a point as we look at this image. We're looking at a distillery clearly. The purely decorative pagoda ventilator on the roof, top of the roof there. And I'm going to just ask, are we looking at Nantau in Taiwan? James Sedgwick in South Africa? Or Union in Brazil? I'm, actually, I'm, I'm just looking at Scott's reaction to see how confident I should be. Well, Gregor, it, it, it's a bit of a stretch, but you've given us a hint already by cracking what the theme is tonight. Mm. Mm, that doesn't help me at all. Not even in the slightest. Did you notice that I talked about midway in the palette or midway on the finish? There's a picture, though, Roy. I thought it was quite clever. <laughs> what was that? 
in my my in my uh, VPUB review, I talked about midway. There's a picture. Never mind. Oh really? Too, too clever. I was too clever. Aye, <laughs> I need to listen to that. See, it's the subtlety. That's but that's what makes the replay, Gregor, ah. all the better because we can go back and pick up the little subtleties that we missed the first pass. That's amazing. I'm looking for that was probably the point that I was trying not to to greet. <laughs> I'm looking for geographical sort of tells. No, think I, about the whiskies that, that's released from any of those, if you recognise any of them. I'm looking at those trees almost uh, like you know, like what trees grow in different places. What's the provenance of the trees. What are the provenance of the trees? Brian Sky is admitting that he's burst his, his chance of a full score tonight. Bear in mind, Roy, that Malt Whiskey Yearbook only picks a selection of distilleries from some countries. That's why I specifically made note of it, Greg. I realise that occasionally um, that can happen, for sure. Give us your best guesses then, boys, in three, two, one, go. B, both of you think it's South Africa because at James Sedgwick in South Africa, they make three ships whiskey. Ah. Wonderful. I, I guess that crew. because the sky was too clear for Taiwan. <laughs> <laughs> and certainly the colours are too saturated for Scotland, I think. <laughs> I don't I know if Scotland is an option, of course. Total guess. I had no clue. Neil Cochran is saying, Roy, any more uh, any more questions like three and you won't make your fourth anniversary. <laughs> <laughs> Aye, some things are a bit tricky. This could potentially be banana skin as well. Ochentoshin's three wood refers to which three kinds of wood. Now, this is a product that's been out there for a long time, and I'm not sure how long it's been this three kinds of wood. But currently, as in now on their website today, is it A, refill bourbon, first fill bourbon in Oloroso, B, American oak, French oak, and Spanish oak, or C, Pedro Jimenez, Oloroso, and bourbon? <laughs> Actually, is, is being sarcastic, two out of five. He's congratulating himself on a cracking performance today. Oh, dear. Greg is saying, Greg's Whiskey Guide, three out of five, and very poetic of you, Roy. Uh, that's may maybe with uh, talking about the three ships. Oh, Thomas Elmer is admitting two out of five. It's a blowout. Not yet. We're only halfway through, Thomas. Hold tight. You've only dropped three so far. Sugar Kitty, it looks like a new name, is saying uh, halfway around the world as a kid. I was never sure of that. It looks like a new name, Sugar Kitty. Welcome. It's nice to have you in here. Orange Wheel Rule is in here thinking that it's B, American Oak, French Oak, and Spanish Oak. Most people are thinking B, actually. Greg's Whiskey Guide saying, yep said that about a uh, malt whiskey yearbook because of the French distilleries. That's right. If you remember when Ingvar was on the show, Greg, he talked about the difficulty it is having somebody on the ground in the locality to give them feedback of all the new distilleries as they spring up. Because as somebody's opening a distillery, probably one of the last things in their to-do list is to call Ingvar and ask for a mention in the malt whiskey yearbook, although you would appreciate that. So Greg, you should maybe be his go-between for France. Boys, I need you to guess A, B, or C. B, two Bs, American oak, French oak, and Spanish oak. I did say it was a banana skin. It's Pedro Jimenez, Oloroso, and bourbon. The reason this question is in here for the three types of wood is because it's three, but because that surprised me. Mm. I didn't know that it was PX. I didn't know that three wood was PX. Quite amazing. I didn't even think, I've never heard of a PX from Ochentoshin. Question seven, which surname was synonymous with Glenn? Forgive the self-indulgence here, perhaps. You might see a wee name, a recognised name slipping in. Which surname was synonymous with Glendronach, Glenlossie and Longmorn distilleries in the late 19th century? Was it my name? A, Grant, B, Mitchell or C, Duff? Grant is obviously well known in whiskey across Glen Farkless, across Grants, of course, Glen Fiddick, Balvenny, etc. Mitchell is a well known name, a name originally hailing from Aberdeen. Duff is all over the place in whiskey, but synonymous with those three distilleries in the late 19th century. Grant, Mitchell, or Duff? Maybe on reflection, this isn't as easy as a quiz as I thought. I'll ask you to guess, boys. Going downhill fast, Jerry Miller is saying. B, Mitchell, and A, Grant. 
you can see Scott and my enthusiasm just just nosediving. <laughs> you can see <laughs> Drams in the same taste nothing like a PX. Um, I, I think unfortunately the three would uh, suffers a wee bit from its presentation. Graham Young is saying a huge celebration of the three years of Aquavita evangelism. Cheers, Roy. Just a quick check in from work. Graham, he's he's um, he's in healthcare, so <laughs> you've got far more uh, uh, urgent things to do, Graham. But I appreciate you stopping by, my friend. It's really nice uh, to see you. And Graham in Canada, cheers to you, buddy, and thank you for all you do every day, despite everything. I can tell you we're talking about John Duff, who worked at Glendronach. He then went off and founded Glenlossie. And then after a spell trying to found distilleries in South Africa and the States, he came back and founded Longmorn and went off to do lots of other things before the Pattisons brought him down in uh, 1898 and made him skint. But his mark on the Scotch whiskey landscape was uh, left by that time. My friend, Uncle Willie, Willie Dolier up there in Helensburg said, hi, happy third, just made it in for last orders. Hope to catch up soon. Hi, Willie. Thank you very much, my friend. Cheers for dropping in. And thank you for all your support over the years, Willie. Question eight. Monkey Shoulder was launched featuring malts from Glenfiddich, Balvenie, and A, Elsa Bay, B, Canenvey, or C, Garvin. The banana skin here is the way that the, the question is phrased, if that helps. I see the scores are lower than I expected. <laughs> Jimmy Legg is saying tons of duff in this quiz. Neil Cochran is saying three out of seven, living the dream. Thomas Elman is saying four out of seven, coming back on the back nine. And Blair Stevenson is admitting that it's pure luck that he's got four out of seven. Shane Lay is saying five out of seven, got my pass, time to coast. <laughs> Absolutely, Shane. Uh, Lassie, uh, Hort Oatsman thinks it's B for can envy. Brian Sky says, you bad man, I'm getting humped here. Easy quiz, I. I see, it's difficult for me to pitch, I have to be honest, Brian, but uh, I, I, I thought... <laughs> Hmm. It is coming off a wee bit harder than I expected, if I'm honest. Three, two, one. Give us your answers. Can envy? Absolutely. We don't know if it's still can envy now, because obviously uh, down in Girvan in their grain complex down there, they have Elsa Bay as a malt distillery, and they could be using liquid from there now. But it was launched as a triple malt um, from Speyside. So can envy so was obviously the third component. If you answered B, give yourself a point. Second from last question. The top three best attended V pubs ever all have what in common? Scott Adamson in attendance, perhaps? <laughs> A, they all had lockdown themes. B, they all had whiskey YouTubers as guests. Or C, they all had master distillers as guests. A, lockdown themes. B, whiskey YouTubers as guests. Or C, master distillers as guests. What did the three top attended VPUBs all have in common? I'm talking about live audience. I'm not talking about replay here. Um, the first one broke 300, the second one almost broke 400, and the, the, the top one did indeed uh, easily break 400 live. Boys, in three, two, one, give me your answers. B. Absolutely. Uh, number three is Ralphie's stream way back at the start of 2019. Number two was the collaboration I did with It's Bourbon Night, Chad and Sarah over in Kentucky, and the best uh, attended VPUB I've ever had with 440 plus uh, live attendees was Daniel Whittington from the Whiskey Tribe. So there you go. And that makes sense because the, the communities, you know, that, that kind of overlap of the communities coming together, it makes perfect sense. Last question, everybody. Let's see how the scores are doing in the chat. Four out of six for Jimmy Legg. He needs this. Four out of six, Jimmy. Do you mean four out of nine? You need this for your pass mark then. Steve A is saying seven out of nine pass mark already. Richie Z is in. Good to see you, Richie. Fals Graf on six. Too Slow Rob on five. Got his pass mark. Andrew Pierce as well. Pass mark. Shane Lee passed on seven. Uh, Chuck on six. Mark Harrell is, is in as well. He's got six out of nine. Listen, lots of you have already made your pass mark. Maybe it's not that bad. 
but there's a good chance that uh, question 10 is indeed an ass hat tonight. And Neil Cochran is mopping his brow and saying, five out of nine, few. You made it, Neil. You got your pass mark. Chris Mayer is asking, what are your guest scores? I'm on five. I'm on six. It's that first Both. question. Got me ahead of you, Gregor. Both pass mark. Both pass mark. It looks like at this point it's Gregor that's going to be sending out a flight to somebody. <laughs> question 10. If YouTube views were spirit LPA capacity, which distillery would the VPUB be? <laughs> so you need to have an idea how many views the channel has had and you need to have an idea what the capacities of these three distilleries could be. It is an asshat question, I don't deny. I apologise. A, Glenn Turret, B, Glenn Geary, or C, Glenn Murray. I'm going to help you hugely here. I'm going to tell you that Glenn Turret is around 370,000 litres capacity. What they make, I'm not sure, but that's their capacity. Glenn Geary is about, I think, 1.3 to 1.4 million litres. And Glenn Murray is up around 5 million litres. <laughs> Just the V-pops, Roy. Not, not pre-recorded. No, this is the entire channel. Ah. Ah, sorry, that's that's a mistake. Yes. Gregor, thank you for that. I should mention it's not just the V pubs. I'm talking about the channel. I get confused there. I did. That was I should have checked the questions beforehand. I'm quickly looking up to see uh, just to make sure. Aye. A Glenn Turret. B Glenn Geary or C Glenn Murray. And three, two, one. Both on B with Glen Geary. Richie Z has bought me a virtual dram to say virtual dram for you, Roy. Thank you, Richie Z, um, for buying me a dram despite this uh, brutal quiz that I've laid <laughs> out to you. Richie, it's a pleasure to have you in. One of the very early guys as well. You, it feels like you've been here since the beginning, Richie. Cheers, my friend. I can tell you both that you're absolutely spot on. Uh, the, the channel is currently sitting about between 1.3 and 1.4 million, million views. views. Um, and YouTube uh, speak, it's not very big at all. It's quite small. Uh, but Glen Geary is round about that in terms of LPA capacity. So that means that, Scott, you finish on 7 out of 10. And Gregor, I'm afraid you manage a 6 out of 10, right? Yeah. So how does do that we... mean? There was a certain in that quiz that it became not about being the fastest runner but just not being as slow as Gregor <laughs> <laughs> I think I've, I've, saved, I've, I've been saved from the bear but I'll send out a wee triple pack of samples as well that's a pretty low bar oh, so, so so we could have we could have two two draws then two prizes right yeah if you're willing to do that that's that's nice of you Scott absolutely so I'm going to I'm going to ask a question then let me ask a question um, I, I just need to pull something out. Uh, okay. The first person to, we, we started off asking an Octomore question, didn't we? Uh, we, we were back at the start, it was 10.4. The first person to tell me, this will be a tricky one, I know. The point four, what kind of cask does that denote? Octomore 10.4 is what? What kind of cask is it? Stewie Baby is quite right. Six out of ten, bring back Menno. Menno's welcome to come back anytime. I loved his quiz. Um, let's see. Oh, we're Andrew, right. Andrew Butler manages it. He's saying Virgin Oak. So there you go. One of you, I'll, we'll say Gregor. You have to send a flight to. Well, wait. Let's wait and see because Andrew Butler. Yeah. I'm pretty sure he's in the UK. So if anybody uh, ends up coming in in the states or North America, then that might be better for you. Um, so well done, Andrew. You're absolutely right. Virgin Oak is right, and the 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 very knowledgeable uh, lounge absolutely mostly answering Virgin Oak and knowing fine well that it is. Um, so the next question would be, which independent bottler 
charmed the V pub with his guest appearance back in March time ish, might have been April, but around that time. Which mustachioed independent bottler <laughs> owner? I have to compliment you on your uh, World War One mustache and get up uh, for November, uh, Scott. It's looking Thank very. You. good. I look forward to seeing how that comes on. Uh, this is it. Uh, this is year two in the making. <laughs> <laughs> two years. You've been growing uh, out the, the entire stretch of lock, lockdown. It longer than the First World War to grow this stash. <laughs> Cresimir. Douglas Lang. So Cresimir, the Sniper King, has bagged himself a wee flight of drams as well, I think. And Andrew Butler is indeed confirming he's in Croydon, so he's in the UK. So um, I, I guess it doesn't matter. Uh, Gregor, are you okay with taking Andrew Butler's drums? If you need to ship it to me, or, or uh, yep. I guess there's no rush on these things, but you've got to send it to Andrew Butler. Yep. And Scott, uh, Kresimir is in Croatia. Um, if there's any issues with you shipping to Croatia, Scott, speak to me and we'll engage the Mule Network to make sure Kresimir gets his drum. Congratulations, Sniper King. Congratulations, Kresimir. You're absolutely right. It was Fred Lang from Douglas Lang that charmed the V-Pub way back. Uh, at the start of lockdown, Roy, I should I should point out, um, Chris Brown thanks you for the recommendation on that Glenn Livet. Apparently, he was hovering, and he, and uh, his Amazon basket is now full on your recommendation. <laughs> well, I, I do get a wee bit nervous about that because um, you know when when you do kind of engage with something, you need it's not it's not always easy to be confident that everyone's going to there are whiskies out there that you can just say buy this if you don't like it i'll buy it from you it's amazing you're going to like it um and if people have kind of over, over time aligned their palate with mine then it's safe the glen i have to be honest and say it is a bit spicy it is quite hot but it's a good presentation it's a good whiskey it's very fruity very fruit forward um, a wee scoosh of water, and it becomes a lovely dram. And you start to taste what Glenlivet actually is. And before then, you would have to buy a Nadura um, in order to do that. The chances of finding a Glenlivet as an independent is virtually non-existent. So Andrew Butler is just connected uh, with... Uh, so we're both in Cro uh, Croydon? No? I'm not sure what you mean, uh, Andrew. Let me know what you're talking about. Donald Pass Whiskey saying, Hi, Roy and everyone. Congratulations on three years. Great live stream. Tim, I didn't even know that you were in earlier tonight. It's nice to see that you've been here. Thank you very much for uh, for joining us again, my friend. Always, Donald Pass Whiskey feels like you've been here from the beginning too. And uh, Alistair is saying, Cresimir wins and he only has one eye. What a man. That's right. He's been in for an operation on his eye. So the sniper is literally <laughs> sniper king. He's won like 13 of these sniper coins that we're playing for tonight. He's quite incredible. Was it the thing more than that, he's been sending them out to other people. He's donating them across the world. He's literally got an eye patch on and he's still able to snag himself some free drams. Listen, I've had a wonderful, wonderful time tonight. Um, I know it's been a self-indulgent -indul V-pub but I think that's okay. I don't celebrate a lot of milestones or anniversaries, but three years is something that I did want to say, aye, it's worth celebrating that. Alexandra's just bought me a dram saying happy three years and many more to come. Um, I am very, very grateful uh, to everybody. Um, I'll be able to thank uh, patrons a wee bit more on Sunday night. Um, uh, I'll be able to thank you more on a week from now and for every VPUB going forward in the future. I really do enjoy hanging out with all of you tonight. I'm very grateful to all the community, all the other creators, the collaborators, the people from the industry like Scott and all his peers, everybody for giving this uh, such... Uh, uh, Alison Gray's bought me a dram scene. Well done, Ryan, three years. But particular this year, the barflies have needed the VPUB and you more than ever in 2020. Slank. Thanks and slancha. I hope that I'm creating connections, Alistair, a bit like you and I, um, that will endure way beyond 2020 and all the challenges that we've faced together. Cheers, my friend, and thank you for all your support as not just a barfly, but as a moderator and a friend as well. Cheers, Alistair. Thank you. Daniel from Mass is saying, it's not whiskey until it's three years old. Many years to come, my friend. I'm into that, Daniel. And Richie Z is saying, love you, Roy. Richie? I've never met. I'm not even sure what you look like, but I love you too. And I mean that sincerely. Thank you, my friend, for all your support. Gregor McQuee, 
Yeah, Big Diddy, thank you so much for everything. Thank you for being a pal and just being around there. <laughs> and, and thank you for wearing the uniform tonight. Scott, I guess the only reason that you're not in uniform is because you don't own one. We'll need to fix that soon. Um, but it's a pleasure to have had you joining me, as I've already said tonight. Thank you so much for that. Um, hang around till the end so we can have a wee chat and raise a glass offline. Thank you both for hanging out with me. Uh, and I look forward to the next time that I see you, perhaps at a festival or a tasting, Scott, whatever it is. And Gregor, it'll need to be at the pot still or something, won't it? Indeed. Cheers, High Rob. in hand. <laughs> Cheers, my friend. Thanks, Scott. Cheers. Wonderful stuff. I've had an absolute blast tonight. Uh, I've really, really loved uh, hanging out with you. You're still 189 even when I'm way over time. Thank you for all your support. Thank you for everything you do. Chris is laughing and saying, lol, you're big. Diddy, aye, you big diddy. Um, Chris Pollack is saying great VPUB. Chris, if you've enjoyed this, thank you. Uh, it's a different VPUB tonight, but one that I've enjoyed very much as well. Steve is saying thank you indeed, one of the things to look forward to regularly. Steve, thank you for all your support. Thank you for just being one of those solid, reliable people that's just there. You've got my back, making sure I don't miss things. And when I do make mistakes, picking them up. Thank you, Steve. You're a star. Uh, Hellswood, great VPUB as always. Here's to many more. Slanchy actually is saying goodnight and congratulations again, Roy. Um, wonderful stuff. Uh, Tim is saying, here, here, here. <laughs> you are a mental health lifesaver during the lockdown. Thank you, Tim. Thank you so much. And odd Johan Lundberg has bought me a wee dram to say happy anniversary. Thank you, Johan. Thank you so much. It's a great name, odd Johan Lundberg. Cheers. I'm going to say thank you all. I'll see you. Some of you will see Sunday night. The rest of you will see a week from now. And thank you for making the last three years way better than I could ever have reasonably expected. I'll see you all soon. Thank you. <laughs>